You can't make it. Okay, then. All right, we're live. Okay. Hi, everybody. How are you? I didn't see the thingies. Welcome to Crippled System, episode 198. <laughs> the... <laughs> why are you, why are you, you just look so confused. I know. I, I was looking for us. There we are. We're over there. We're yeah. over there. Yeah. We're, every, we're, we're also right here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can look around. You'll yeah. See we're here. We're right now. We might not be. We could be talking about this conversation that we have like every... 10, 20 episodes of how we'll see five seconds from now what just happened on the screen there. My point was that we might not exist. Oh. Are we going into that marvelous conversation now? Well, I mean, you know, when you think about it, all your sensations are just input on your brain, and so they can be falsified with any kind of sufficiently advanced technology. You might not have a physical body or a so reality we're, at all. We're in we're the brain the situation. In a yeah, the brain in a jar. Or the... Yeah. Uh, what, what the fuck did I just say? We're in the situation. Yes. I've the situation <laughs> room. <laughs> the Al Roker. I meant to say the Matrix. I don't yeah. know how I ended up with, with the situation. We, we got a problem. <laughs> the situation. Isn't there like a wrestler that's called the situation? No, there, there no, was a, a guy Jersey from Shore. Jersey Shore guy. Oh, okay, yeah. You Why do I know that? Why do you know that? I just know he exists. I couldn't identify him out of a lineup. Probably yeah, I couldn't either. Poofy I guess, hair and bronze. I guess if it was like one guy from Jersey and like four guys in suits, I might be able to identify him. But if you take like four, you know, Jersey schmoes, I couldn't tell any of them apart. Yeah. That's that's probably true. There was him and there was Snooky. Yeah, it's just names that Jay I know. Jay Wow. What, yeah, I don't know. Like beyond, that's beyond, beyond names. That. Yeah, it's... Oh, you know what we could do? We could give those away. What the Jersey Shore people? Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's legal. Well, yeah, I think they. We think we even fought a war over that. We had the war to defend the Jersey Shore people. Ooh, I just, I just smashed my phone. Ah, I smashed my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the podcast. Thanks for listening. Save the phone. Sacrifice the knee. No, the uh, uh, no, the brain in a jar. Yeah, you could, you could just be a brain in a jar. And hilariously, beyond that is that noise that uh, you know. M- hypothetically if memories are important <laughs> <laughs> and he's amused by the sight of his roommate <laughs> no no I tried drinking the soda from this side of the can oh that's not how that works that's not how it works no you, you should use the open side I had a very long exciting weekend so I'm tired me too I, I might be tired me too yeah. Well, with the like the the people who came in from like uh, Jr. and Alex and Meg came in Friday night, so I board game Friday night at the Shay's house with them, and then we board gamed all Saturday from you know dawn to dusk, and then before they left in the morning, we went coffee and like board gamed all morning. So it's been like a eighty-five hour board game session. Oh, it's a Sambas this morning. That's pretty, oh, which is pretty good too. I know it was I know it was in, it was birthday thing, but yeah. I, I wish you invited. You can always go to Sambas on Sunday. I would all, I would I would There's only a lady go with eating you. by herself and no, it's like, that's like I don't want to be that guy eating by himself at Samba. What what is well you can go anywhere you're, 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 you you have the inability to go anywhere alone. There is, I know I can understand I that it, there's a weirdness to going to a restaurant alone. Like mm-hmm. I actually did have to actively overcome that once upon a time. Movies. But same with movies, yeah. Movies I can go to alone. I can do that by myself. I can but do movies. More times than not, people annoy me more than they don't. I just... <laughs> so if you're, if, it's just like, if it's you're eating alone, you, you don't... Yeah, it's just peaceful. It's peaceful, and I need peace in my life. But restaurants, I, I feel like I have to go with somebody else. It, it, it feels... It would feel weird to me... If I go there to get takeout and leave, then I'm yeah. fine. But if I'm going there to sit down... And actually have a meal, I feel weird about someone, it. You need someone to hold your hand, stare into their eyes, and go, "I love you." No, you no. Love he, me, he doesn't want all the other people to look at the pathetic, lonely man <laughs> who doesn't have a date and he's just eating by himself. Yeah, I guess there is no world where I give a fuck about other people. <laughs> right? <laughs> there are like nine people in this world that I care about, and if anything happened to them, I would feel emotions outside those nine people. I could watch someone I'm counting our social circle, and if I get to like ten or eleven. I have to start figuring out who's <laughs> cut from the That's room. fair. It's not. All, it's definitely not on all of our social circle. But if someone, I mean, this, this, I know this is oh. probably a problem with me. But if someone in my social circle that I liked felt pain or was in trouble, I would do any. I would kill for those nine people. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. person number ten, I could watch die and have no emotion inside me. That's it fair. would literally be like, well, no one. Uh, that's good. Not, I, I wouldn't even think it's good, but it's like, well, yeah, it happened. Whatever. It happened. Life sucks. Yep. 
So, so it's weird. So I can't tell if I'm so I'm, I'm I'm like a part-time sociopath outside of my nine. What I have discovered is that I. It turns out you feel that way within the nine too. You just don't admit it until it happens. Yeah, no. Uh, like I've been to like family member funerals and be like, yeah, they're dead. Well, I know and those people I loved. Yeah. It's just like my brain, like it's like, oh man, they're dead now. That sucks. Well, well to some we're gonna go get tacos. Yeah. I mean, to some degree though, it's I mean, <laughs> what you're always thinking at funerals, just waiting for. I'm so thinking all the time everywhere. <laughs> yeah. All right, is this over? Can we get tacos now? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I get to the some degree. I mean, especially if if the person was sick for a while, like uh, an expected death, it's easy to get to that stage. Sure, sure. It's mm-hmm. the shocking deaths that are hard to get to that stage fast. But yeah, someone like someone had a little pa- a painful thing. You're like, okay. Tacos. <laughs> yeah, like during the death sequence, you know, like, yeah. like yeah, absolutely weep and blah blah blah. But then once the funeral like yeah. happens, I'm just like, okay, cool. I'm with life. Okay, so I was just sitting there thinking, it was like you were talking about like waiting for the death, or, like you're actually there holding the hand and you yeah. feel the life pass from the body, yeah. and they're like. Tacos. I'm yeah. confident that if I die, <laughs> not right there, but <laughs> if I die, I'm guaranteed a few people will be sad for a few minutes and they'll be erased to the board game collection. It'd be like, okay, that's why Katie has instructions to burn it all down. I, I, I've, I've actually thought for a while about how to divvy up my board game collection. Yeah. It's basically half you and half my brother, <laughs> but I don't know which half yet. Whoever's willing to, do, whoever, whoever can follow through and just break in the hard door without looking at it gets everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave my copy of Comet to Newbie. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was my neck. That felt good. So, uh, Jim. You made the cut, Chris. As Chris asked, he was curious who made the cut. Chris is in the nine. What? Well, he's in the nine. Wow, I'm surprised Chris is in the nine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all you told us before the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> So Jim asks, is, does the restaurant thing apply to cafes with a bar? I mean, I can probably go to a bar alone. But I, I sitting at a table, sitting you know, at a table at a restaurant, know, like, in a booth a by myself. Someone's eating like, in a bar. It's like oh, there's that old sad bar guy just sitting there alone. That seems creepier to me than a bar. I, I mean, can go to a place that has high booth walls, like over at the O'Grady's. That's down by here. It's got booth walls that go up. I can do that. Sure. It's just other people. I don't know. Just to me, it just feels weird going to a place, sitting down and eating. I got over that when I was I was driving home from someplace and I had a, a book that I had gotten like ninety five percent done where I was and then I was like you know what I want to finish that book yeah. so I pulled off the highway and just ate alone reading a book yeah that I could do though yeah <laughs> that's I guess it's just go to a restaurant yeah sit, order for yourself like, make the plate and make it and just like look over and pretend to talk to the person that way maybe someone will think you're like you know you're missing you know it's just like you know just having a conversation with nobody. Pull the chair out and just talk to... I heard a good trick, which is that you act like you're waiting for somebody yeah. and get more and more... And be like, have like a, a ring box and be dressed up nicely <laughs> and just wait and wait and be like, no, no, just a little more. And then eventually they'll just pay for your meal because you're pathetic and sad. Like, <laughs> like just go there with a tux? Yeah. With yeah. A tux and a ring and box and everything. Ring like box. You're gonna, and then just be like, just, 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 maybe she's just running late, you know, and eventually you- they feel sad for you and they buy you your meal. Could you put this in the milkshake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good mm. idea. Yeah, well, you know, there you go. <laughs> I can go carry you alone. I, I can go through all the extra work for a free meal. Uh, <sighs> good times. That was a 198? Yeah, we're at 98. Yay! 198. That's 18 so, times 11. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's science. <laughs> So we do have some kind of announcements. There's a tournament that's coming up next weekend over in Chicago. Cause it's the second weekend, second Saturday. So this weekend, this coming weekend. Okay. God damn it! <laughs> 198 episodes, and we still can't get that shit right. I've had it right <laughs> since episode one. Yeah. I don't know your problem. Yeah, whatever. Um, Sky cake. Tomorrow, we're going to be recording our first uh, movie pain train of the season, of the year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to make it, unfortunately. But. No, no. And it's probably for a good thing. But Guy Ritchie does good films at times. Does the movie come out Friday? It comes out Friday, but uh, Marcus was giving away free tickets to go see King Arthur on Today. Monday night. Uh, tomorrow, yeah. So we got... we got some tickets to that. I, I mean, If I wasn't busy Monday night, I'd see it for free. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys are doing Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. Otherwise, I would have invited 
some of you guys. Well, or invited you guys to go down and get free tickets from your Magic Movie Awards cards. I think I've seen a movie... No, I've seen a lot of free movies. Never mind. I was trying to think like how many times I had free passes to movies, and it's almost always terrible. Because I saw Batman and Robin for free. Well, yeah. I mean... I remember I saw that, the that one, one wasn't free. expecting that that to be that bad. I mean, Batman Forever wasn't that bad of a film. It was not compared was, to Batman and Robin. <laughs> it was a masterpiece compared to Batman and Robin. Yeah. <laughs> I. You were gonna say something. I was. We're not. I, I was. I was saying a topic. We're doing announcements. What announcements? I was, oh yeah. I was, yeah. I was gonna jump ahead of announcements, and I, I, I pulled. And then back. there's MomCon. That's happening two weeks from now. Also, on next Saturday, there's a board game. There's a I'm Boards having like a garage sale type thing where you can like rent tables and like uh, sell stuff. All the tables have been reserved. I'm supposed to go in with someone on a table, but I haven't followed up with them in like two weeks. So. Wait, what? What table? Garage sale? Who? What? I'm Board on Saturday is doing a thing where they do it twice a year. Yeah. It's one of the one of the. It's not actually I'm Board. It's a board game group in Madison rents out all the, the space that I'm and they and a person gets charged like ten dollars for a table and then you can sell. Whatever you can fit on that table, you can sell over the course of the day. I have a lot of cocaine. Yeah, you can sell. Yes. And it's all cash, too, so whatever you want to sell. So it's kind of a cool thing. I really... Can I just lay down oh, on the so, table? Oh, so it's not, like, it's yeah. not a commission-based No, it's, just, That's it's, good. It's, it's between you and the person who buys it. And, uh, like, I, there's, like, a few games that are just too big that I want to get rid of. But I don't want to, like... I'm not, I'm not going to put them on eBay because it's just too heavy or too whatever. Just tell people around here. Yeah, no, I have I mean, I sold a lot of games. When you have a commission uh, wall, like... I'm Board always has that commission yeah. uh, bookshelf. Which is good for stuff. But I mean, I've made hundreds. I mean, this year I've made hundreds of dollars. I haven't, I haven't bought anything in months from I'm Board because I've been taking old games and I just can't transferring every three old games turns into one new game, which is an okay ratio. Are you, are you doing that? Can I give you a couple games? I don't have a table. I'm supposed to be getting space on someone else's table, but I haven't actually talked to them in two weeks, so I may have lost my space that I've gotten. Talk to them? I haven't gone to... I have like three yeah. things. Well, I mean, like, if I have enough space, it's, it's, I mean, if there's any space left, it's, I've, you know, it's going to be for me because... I'm what? Me. I just had. <laughs> <laughs> you should have joined the Madison Board Game Club, and then you could do it all about it. I don't. I don't join them. I, but, I didn't know there was one. I've been skipping. Well, Thursday. It's a Thursday night group that goes on board, but I've been skipping. I've been board gaming Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays, and sometimes on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. So I've been skipping the Thursday night board game town thing because I need a day to relax just a little bit, just like catch up on my twenty hours of TV, which is my Thursday night. Work until three and then watch TV till four a.m. just to catch up on the week. Yeah. So I've been skipping them. So that's just another announcement. Or game swap. Does I, the commission section I'm bored? Is it store credit or you store credit? Yeah, okay, store they credit. don't just. Yeah. T- I thought maybe they just took a cut. No, they used to do. Uh, some places used to do cash or credit. But they just do pure credit. Hmm. But it's easier. To, I mean, it's not bad. Sure, sure, sure. And I just buy enough board games that it's just. If I don't buy it off the shelf, I you know peg. I just get it and I'm bored via the trade via the commissions. Fair enough. Uh, I can't think of any other events that are happening then. I there's, thought Rick was going to do a CID thing, but he never posted it. He did actually finally post it. He is doing something on the 20th. Um, I of believe May? it's... Yep, 20th of May. I believe it's uh, at That's Pegasus. That's when news is, right? No. no there's, there's, that last okay. there's, there's this... Actually, I, I was wrong. It's about three weeks from now. Okay. It's the 27th <laughs> is... 26th, 27th, 28th, I think, okay. is the uh, news on Con. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. That's, That's true. Yep. Which yep. I'm surprised Muse didn't. Usually Muse, they, I have like five years in a row ran some big like thing on Mother's Day. It was they, they, they kept doing like a two day weekend thing. Like they did like three of the Mayhem Cups on that weekend or whatever. They just kept overlapping Mother's Day features. Jerks. They would probably they probably had Muse on Con scheduled for next weekend. Yeah. And then they that's when somebody yelled at them. Yeah. It is good they changed from MomCon to MuseCon. I finally realized there is issues with MomCon. <laughs> It well, made sense having on Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a wrong clientele. It started showing up. <laughs> oh, good times. Uh, then we have our Frank, the Frankenstein event that's happening on uh, mm-hmm. June twenty fourth. Sure. And that's pretty much all I can really think of right now. I might run an event. I haven't run an event in forever. Yeah, yeah. You should. And I, I was thinking. I actually was. I, I was because we all kind of hemmed and hawed about maybe it would be interesting, maybe it wouldn't, and so I might do that uh, two list, or you can take one list, but you get uh, a specialist for doing it. Because that was actually kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So just uh, yeah. Let us know. And it was funny that everybody's like, ah, oh, you could break that instantly, and then they'd stop and go, well, actually, <laughs> and that, that was an interesting response. Well, we'll see if people can get over their uh, CID problems. Which isn't really problems; it's mostly the the uh, internal proxy basis. I just. 
I can't. It's like being on a peg. I've been, I've, been, I've gone to peg now for five weeks, and I've played five weeks of games, and I've had all the fun. But man, it's like you have like four hours of like constant mummering in the background about the same topic for five weeks. It starts getting old. But there, I don't even care if it's high people are on. Five weeks. It's it's been three weeks. It seems like five. It's been nonstop. Our it, it has nonstop, been stop like talk about for you know three hours, four hours. Every we, week. we had one person Actually, in our gaming group that was extremely excited about playing Mark III. It was having just finally started playing Mark III, started having a good time, and then just suddenly CID hits and shitstorm apocalypse. This is week four of 2017. In week, this is week three of the ba- of the uh, battle engines in week four. Like this is this week three of the battle engines? Week, I think yeah, it's, it's week, week two, two of the battle engines. I've battle. only done two sets of cards. Yeah, so. I mean this like. Because the battle engines are dropping on Wednesdays, yeah. so the Wednesday that is inclusive of the calendar week we're currently in. This is week three of Steamroller. Next week is week. F- this the Wednesday final. is week four. No, that, that's what I mean. That's my point. That's my point. Is, is you know we're four. we're coming up on yes. Wednesdays are when the changeovers happen, mm-hmm. so we are nearing the end. this calendar week will be the beginning of week three of battle engines, which is confusing, I guess, because the weeks are happening in the middle of weeks. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This Wednesday is week three of battle engines. Because we play on Wednesdays, when I said this is week three, I meant functionally yeah. it is for us because it will be when we play on we, Wednesdays. We start, yeah. 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 Which is kind of convenient for us, at least. <laughs> but that's only for, you know, people who have Wednesday bo- game night, that that's the truth. Yeah. No, and Jeremy might... Jeremy hasn't played War Machine yet. He's about to... He ha- he couldn't come down the last two weeks because of his work. Kind of had a conference thing, but he good chance to start seeing him down there a couple times. Yeah, I've been, I've been play, I, I still, I've only been playing one game a week, and I could have played two once or twice, but it's just been a, it's been a very I've been enjoying one game a week pretty well. Yeah, it seems like the right. Mi- I play a game whether I win or lose, I'm in a good mood. I'm like, well, I don't need to double my. You know, it's like I feel I started and ended happy. It's good enough. You yeah, know, no reason to push my luck. Not that I doubt it'll be good, but you know. Two weeks ago, I played two games and hated both of them. Then I quit. Yes, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's that is a chain of events that yeah. happened. Yep. Yeah, I yeah. Five boosted dice minus sixes, and I had a total of one damage. Yeah, that's about average. Yep. Numbers are true. Science. Yep. And it broke me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, no, I've been I've been having fun playing down on Wednesdays again. No, the, to to answer somebody in the in the chat, uh, somebody asked if it was Jeremy that was suddenly all gung ho about it. No, it was Jim. Yeah. Well, yes. I, that's why I said he wasn't around. I wasn't really gonna. Yeah. It doesn't have a question mark, but to answer something else in the chat, nine, I guess. <laughs> No, we don't deal with math. Remember? Well, yeah, I mean, there's an equation there. Six divided by two, parentheses, two plus one, and parentheses. I mean, that's nine. Yeah. But why? We, why is we that have nine? To, we have to, well, you can't use math because, you know, we have to inappropriate uh, associate that quote to Jason Souls. Because that's, that's what people seem to do now. The number nine? No, just the, the, the fact of, like, we don't want measuring tools such and such and such and such and math. To be an advantage in War Machine. The movie Nine? No. The Nine? With the uh, uh, Ryan, Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is in the Nines. Yeah? No. He's Ryan Reynolds is good. I like him yeah. in most things. He's good. Not in waiting, movie. though. He's, He's the, the only person. Part of waiting. He is the only person I know about waiting. When somebody mentioned Andy Milanakis the other day. Oh, God. Like, remember when that person existed? He, he existed. Somebody else posted something about him recently. Or said something about him recently. Oh, my God. I think it was at Board Game Day. It might have it been. Uh, you got to you got to show more, more people Imperial at board game day. Or yes, I do like Imperial. And what's funny is I, I got to, uh, to play um, Louis the Fourteenth, and, and I was like, yeah, I haven't played this in forever. And then I went home and I just went on Board Game Geek because I do that after I play a game a lot of times. And I saw that this year a re a re implementation of that game is coming out. Oh. So it's just kind of interesting. And I, it was rated 7.1 on Board Game Geek. Like I said, it's a surprisingly highly rated game. Every time we play Imperial, and I, I didn't play this. I was playing Terraforming Mars. But it's funny that there's always again something new we learned about the rules of that damn game. This was fucking huge, yeah. too. I can't even fathom the effect of that in the game, other than it's a big... You just, this how we how, how the score gets counted was different than we realized. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, when you different. play it a certain way and everyone plays it way, it's not as bad. It was like we gypped ourselves because we all played the same way. Yeah, I, it accelerated the game a bit because every every country had, w- was stronger, yeah. right? It helped every country. Uh, even like Russia, who's mostly landlocked, because it encouraged them to come out through Turkey into yeah. the, the Mediterranean Sea. Is, yeah. I, have, I played Terraforming Mars for the first time in a couple of months and I forgot how much I need to play the game more. 
Yeah, I hear you guys talk about that game a lot. I don't know if I would like it. I just, yeah. How'd you like role player? I hear they they browbeat you into playing that. Uh, th- it was it was fine. Um, Brian was was trying to do other things at the same time. He was trying to teach well, the I game was as teaching, well. Yeah, I was teaching them how to play. Kind of got him going. Then I kind of just wandered away and got pulled into something else. Eventually, I got him. You guys are about halfway through, and then some other game started that I joined. I don't know what it was. It, it was fine, except oh, sushi. I played sushi go. Yeah, um, yeah, it was fine. The the only issue was that uh, Chris and I were ready to go yeah. on our turns, and and Ben and Tim was it? Yeah, Tim were, and yeah. Yeah, we're not ready to go on their turns. Yeah. So yeah, it was a sand timer. Oh, Tim is a little slow. He played Terraforming Mars. He, he played Five Trees. He's one of the slower people I know for games, but he played both Five Tribes, which has the potential of the most paralysis as, as possible, and Terraforming Mars pretty quick, which surprised me. I mean, but I can see him not being as quick as he could be because really, role players only you, you pick a die and pick a th- card. It's not. I mean, that's it. And there's only f- <laughs> you're only picking from one to four, so it's not. Like right. you, it's not like it's a huge variety. But and somebody in chat says our mics sound like they're maxed out often, but looking at our sound waves on the computer, we're nowhere near spiking. Of course, his volume's on max. He's like, "What's happening?" Yeah, he's got the headphones shoved into his ear canals. No, it's probably it's probably the audio going out. Yeah, but the th- I see oh. I can little spiky things. Audio is different. Audio your your face is different. Your face your, is different. Your, your whole system's out of order. Yeah. Your mama. Yeah. Bye. Now Andy's gone. We can talk smack about him. But uh, we, so we, pl- we played Concordia this morning uh, with before the guys left. Alex had never played it. And uh, everyone that played Imperial, that played Concordia, definitely said they liked both games a lot. And they really want to... I looked up the other games, the guys that develop those other games, and they are, none of his other games are rated as high as those two games. Sure. But some of them are rated pretty good, but yeah, they just really... They have the same opinion. They all, everyone who plays the games, I think, has kind of the same opinion as... They're just different enough from everything else that... And different doesn't mean better or worse, but they're different and still intriguing. Yeah. There's something about those games that have multiple paths to victory. Like, when I play War Machine, part of what pulls me into miniature gaming is the flow of a game can change dramatically and you have to be good at modifying how you play and how you, you, you react you have to be good at reacting you have to be good at planning yep and all those things and, and those board and those and the board games that do that it will draw me to them the most and that's why i like el grande a lot i like both of these games a lot games that require games where you need a you need a plan or you're not going to win but you need to be able to know how to switch your plan around and react like those right. those are the elements i want in a game regardless if it's a miniature board game or whatever yep and those games capture it extremely well yep i did like world player to finish my story <laughs> Um, like I said, the only problem I had with it you was just Ben and Tim. I, I just they, that's your review of role just, players that you hate Ben and Tim. I don't hate them. Wow, but they they definitely wow. took a long wow. time yeah. for. To, it, it, it was it's such a simple game. It's basically you you choose you strategically choose which turn you want to start going bidding on by getting the dice on there. Yeah, and then you just you should have a good idea of what's out there already. Yeah. And it, we needed a, a little timer. Man, has it really been a year and a half since there's been a mu- uh, a Mayhem Cup? Uh, Gratz, no, it's Gratz and Red Deer Albuquerque yes, that's, in that's, January that's, of 2016. Uh, there was one in... The, the Mayhem Cup was one at uh, Lock and Load. Yes. That so is, nobody engraved it? I, 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 I got the trophy back, and I made some inquiries as to who was supposed to have the name on there, and I never got the actual for sure name. I, I love this whole funny. side facing me just says Madison, Wisconsin over and over and over again. Yeah. And they had to cheat and put their name on the top even though they hadn't won it. Yeah, they Yeah, they how you, they hosted the event, so they I don't think I, I think I think it was because John doesn't understand how trophies work. Yeah, yeah. It's kinda like when K- Katie gave out some awards for a thing she did and she just filled it all wrong she just didn't understand the concept of awards. And yep. I think John Damaris didn't understand the concept of awards either. Because when you start the cup, someone wins it and you engrave it. Just because you started it doesn't mean you put your name there. Yep. I guess maybe he was cocky. He decided he'd win and didn't realize, you know, we were going to come and... What, what's the date on that? Because that's, you can tell, years we were good in Madison. Oh, uh, it's the uh, 2010 and 11 and 12. Yeah, so those were... Those were, those were half a decade ago, yeah. yeah. I think we were good about a year after that, too. I think I think about 13 or so is when we decided, we, uh, we, got, we got lazy. But Yeah, we just... Yeah, and that's it. We just got lazy. We're yeah. all good players. 
Well, not all of us, but most of us are good players. We just don't play enough. To stay competitive, you just have to play a lot. And nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that, like, but it's... Pagani sucks, but he played so many games that he actually, you know, got decent. If you play 50 <laughs> games a month, you're going to win. I mean, you're, you're just going to... People, you're in a different level of understanding the game when you play 50. You can't... It's almost impossible to someone surprise you with something when you when you know everything. Yeah. And there's the adage, if you do anything for 10,000 hours, you'll yeah. be an expert at it. So, and then when when you're really competitive, and there's, there's only a percentage of people who play well, that much and they stay that good right, i'm also listening to something that you said like five seconds oh, ago so my, my pagani stab yes oh, okay <laughs> all right the audio should be better now okay but not the quality of the content no the content i know i got texted by one of our listeners asking if the feed was having issues so i don't know what it was but uh the feed is fine no. i mean it's i, I just double checked it here it's broadcasting but maybe, maybe he's drunk we appreciate yeah. the uh, touch base though it's always good to make sure we're trying to do good it's for some odd reason every time well it, because i don't have a dedicated system for broadcast uh it keeps on Adjusting the volume for the audio going out. Those sons of bitches. So, yeah. Sons of bitches. Yeah. So Are we on recommendations yet? <laughs> Are we? We're cutting this short. The, no, this was all still announcements. But Brian almost jumped ahead of announcements, so I didn't know if you had a thing. Oh, I, don't, I jumped. I jumped. I jumped. I decided to jump for more boring. Went to, to talk about board games. Oh, okay. That was cool. sort of my my uh, hooray board games. Yeah. We played a lot. We cooked out a lot and played a lot of board games. I had to play the Firefly. I, I do want to set aside some day to just have five people marathon the entire yeah. series. I want to try the campaign mode on Legendary Encounters Firefly. Oh, okay. You played that, didn't you? Mm, I don't think I played Legendary Encounters Firefly. Did you play any I of the Legendary Encounters? The Alien or the yeah, Predator? Yeah, I did one? Alien. Yeah. I did Predator. Yeah, and the Firefly one's cool. Uh, the most interesting thing about it versus Alien and Predator is uh, you have the nine characters of the series, mm -hmm. and you make up the, the deck that you buy cards from, from four of those characters, and then you play as the other five. And so, and, and the cards, like, in the quest and everything, all of stuff, like, you know, the, the five that are being played is, even if you only have four, like, if the three of us were playing, we'd mm -hmm. have our three characters, and then you have two other characters that you just set out on the table, you don't use their deck, and they're still considered to be the five characters that you're quote-unquote playing as, they're called main characters. Sure. And the quests have cards, like, something will come up, it'll say, like, if Mal is a, a main character, such and such happens, if Jane is a main character, such and such happens, if River is a main character, such and such happens, and they're okay. each checked individually. So depending on what character characters you're playing as not only does your card access change but the quests themselves do different things so there's a lot of replayability by playing as different characters mm. Mm. there's even stuff like a, a really neat just to show people you know game balance uh deck thinning is always huge in deck building games like anytime you're allowed to take a card out of your deck and just throw it away from the game correct, it's the most correct. powerful thing you can do in a deck building game and there are two cards in uh firefly that do that one is a chain card, and it's just, you know, kill a, kill a card from your discard pile. And the other one is a river card that says, if Jane is a main character, kill a card in your discard pile. Oh. And it means that you can't have access to both cards, because if Jane's card is in the viable deck, it means he's not a main character, which means river's card won't thin your deck. Hmm. So, okay. you know, they thought of game balance things with that mechanic, which is really cool. I think it's have my you, favorite of the three legendary encounters, but they're all good. Have you seen the uh, the person that modified their uh, pop miniature or the yes. pop toy? Yes, the wash. With, with the wash one. Have you seen it? I can guess what hat, what it is. It's, it's just for the nice stake. Well, I, I had my Darth Maul Qui-Gon Jinn Lego toys where I drilled a hole through Qui-Gon. And, and cut show. Darth Maul in half. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I, no. I, I, yeah, just, I, just, I just impaled Qui-Gon with, with uh, Darth, Darth Maul. Darth Maul's oh, saber. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Darth Maul has robot spider legs now. Well, no, yeah. now he's dead again. But for a while, he had robot spider yeah. legs. He had a good run on the both shows that he was on for a while after that. Yep. I mean, it's nice that everyone who isn't George Lucas realized that that was a waste of a character. Yeah. And they, they, well, because on, on Star Wars, on the Clone Wars, they, they, they included the Night Sisters, and they had all sorts of mystical powers, so bringing him back wasn't that ridiculous yeah. based on what happened. And oh, then, when you have a, a, a fantasy story, yeah. which, you know, it's not a sci-fi story. Yeah. Star Wars is fantasy. It's, it's like The Hobbit. It's yeah. just it's, in space. It is not sci-fi. It's wizards and swords and monsters. It's Lord of the Rings, but on spaceships instead of in yeah. a forest. I, and yeah, I it, consider sci-fi be more spacey though. Anyway, that's just Obi Wan is just Gandalf in space. Mm. Like, there's no science in Star Wars. It's not science fiction. There's zero science. Yeah, it's you got, just you got fantasy. For that. It's fantasy in space. 
But whatever. Ooh. Nitpicking aside, the point is, it's a world of wizards and magic, so you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. You don't have to mm-hmm. justify it. Like, in a sci-fi, you have to be like, oh, his DNA and cloning and this and that. And in Star Wars, you just go, magic, wizards, pew, pew. Maybe maybe that's the reason why everybody hates episode one, for for that reason oh, yeah. of trying to explain this force as an as a not just a mystical thing, <laughs> as being it's just, you know, things that live in your cells. Yeah. Because no, every time I think of that, I think of Parasite Eve. It's so dumb. Parasite Eve, which is a great game. Uh, but it's just so... It's dumb. Like, the only way I can stomach episode one is... is I have to do several things, and one of them is to just to convince myself that the Jedi are just wrong. Like, like two years after those movies, the Jedi went, wait, Minicorians don't do shit. It's unrelated entirely. Oops. And then just never spoke of it again. <laughs> I wouldn't even mind if there, if that had some, like, minor, like... Metaclorians may have speak something, but it wasn't that as relevant as they made it. You know, there could have been like yeah. it was just too unacceptable. But you know, I mean, like I said, but it's it's cool about like the Clone Wars and with Star Wars Rebels, they're able to kind of fix some of those things. And Re- Star Wars Rebels is pretty fantastic. And it's got like three full seasons right now, and I think season four starts in a few months, and it's like the final season. Yep. I hear maybe it's not, maybe it's not a few it. months, but it's like later this year, which is going to be the final season. That's is that all done by Gendy? Tar- no, Gendy Tartakovsky did uh, the. Clone Wars miniseries, okay. and then they had a Clone Wars movie that he didn't do, and then a Clone Wars series off of that movie, and then now there's the Rebels series, but he just did that miniseries. Okay, all right. Which was fucking amazing. The weird thing about the Clone Wars, a TV show, when it, it went like six seasons, and there's like 30 plus episodes out of order. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened in their filming of it, but like, you have to like, there's like, it's like some, you have to like, you have to like watch, if you want to watch it in order, you have to like, get a guide and just like skip around from here to there it's pretty bad the first few seasons are just all mismatched for some reason out of order and then it like fix it it's not like firefly where it aired out of order and then on the dvd it's yeah, in the I right order i don't know what i don't know the full details i just know when because john was rewatching clone wars and he was complaining how he'd like jump around and kind of watch it all properly on netflix weird at least rebels is all in order it's like how people fuck up their playlists on yeah. on uh youtube and Rebels brought so in, uh, and Rebels brought in Thrawn, which was uh, which is great. Yeah, which is voiced by uh, fucking uh, that fucking guy. That guy? Yeah, that guy. The guy from Game of Thrones who's dead who got his face bitten by the wolf. The what? Guy. The guy. The guy. The oh, uh, the, Ramsey Bolton. Yeah, Ramsey Bolton voices yeah. uh, Thrawn. So he gets that creepiness going, and, th- and you know, but yet an intelligent character. So it's... I wish there's a way for Thrawn to have been voiced by uh, Tony J, but Tony J was rude and died a decade ago. <laughs> I I liked how uh, you ever see the video of the guy who plays uh, uh, plays Ramsey and uh, the guy who plays Theon. Theon, yeah, yeah, yeah. both dancing around and like in some kind of yeah. school school. Uh, Music room or something like that. Maybe. Well, that's what they meet. That's that. That's that whole that they did that thing for charity where they brought the whole cat. They made the Game of Thrones musical thing and they basically yeah. brought them all together. And <laughs> that's a hilarious like fifteen minute skit. Apparently, he's like the nicest guy, you know. But well, oh, yeah, you <laughs> wouldn't know it from yeah. I mean, that's acting, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, if people he, like, some actor from Game of Thrones had to leave social media because he kept getting death threats because his character made bad choices. Probably so. the Joffrey kid. Like he he talked about uh, that. Like, Walking Dead had the problem. Yeah, it's just people just like. It's an you can't acting. See. And then, <laughs> well, yeah, the, the lady. God, why can I not remember any actors or actresses' names Actually, right I'm now? I'm having a but the lady today. who plays Cersei, yeah. uh, you know, and she was in Dread and everything like yeah. that. But she talks about how, like, she's supposed to be walking around the street and people just come up and start screaming about how much they hate her. And she's like, <laughs> thanks, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is kind of living the dream in my mind. But that's, yeah. like, oh, it's, I, but of course, you have to thrive off hatred. Got the good advice of watching Misfits in the chat there. If you if you like the guy who played. Uh, oh, yeah, Misfits. Yeah, he's in Misfits. Misfits is great. Well, he. Is he in, he's in a more of the seasons. Misfits is an interesting show because you lose one of the best characters after one season. And the show definitely drops off after season one, but they still peak here and there. Yeah. It's not a show that's just terrible after season one. It's definitely less, but man, they still had high notes here and there. Yep. I mean, anyone, anytime you get involved, having someone punch Hitler is always great. <laughs> uh, excuse you. Headbutt. Oh, yeah, headbutt. Yeah, they headbutt Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I can use my. Uh, what the hell is the Misfits then? Superheroes. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's a superhero thing. It's yeah, and one of them can time travel. Is it, is it like so a British show? Yeah, it's British. Okay, yeah, it's on Hulu. She goes back in time and headbutts Hitler. Cause why wouldn't you if you could time travel? And we're British. <laughs> so I need to move, we need to move on to talk about something very important: Marvel. So we also have Guardians of the Galaxy. So yep. we're gonna have Guardians of the Galaxy spoiler. But before we jump into that, we're I'm I'm at the theater. Jeremy's there, and Jeremy 
during the trailer, they're showing the trailer to Thor 3. Which I think the trailer for Thor 3 might be the best Mar- might be the best Marvel trailer. It might be better than me than the Guardians of the Galaxy. I was gonna say the trailer. first Guardians of the Galaxy trailer was Those amazing. Those two, I can't tell which one. I mean, the thing is, they they both feel like each other. So, yeah. I probably, if I had to put my life in the line, might have to go with the Guardians. But the Thor 3 trailer is phenomenal. Like, that's just a phenomenally done, well done trailer. Their powers are on opposite extremes. So yeah. the Thor trailer is amazing because you know these things, right? Correct. You see Mjolnir break. You yeah. see Thor. You see Hulk. Yeah. You see all this stuff, and it's all familiar. The amazing thing about the original Guardians and what they did a great job with the movie is that nobody on this planet outside of the most closeted, antisocial, neckbeard weeaboos knew anything about Groot or Rocket or Star Wars or anybody. Like, nobody gave two shits. And the trailer knew that. And just... You're watching, you're like, what the... Is that a raccoon with a machine gun riding on a tree? What? What is that? Who is that? Wait, who's that fucking guy? Yeah. And it just did a, such a good job of teasing you with the unknown. And, and they, But they did it with great music, and they oh, still yeah. cut the scene together just right, and they... And, the like, moment when so they do the hooked on the th- feeling yeah. build-up, and it does the... Yeah. that the song does but then that that beat continues and yeah. goes into just the rhythmic drum like when machine guns mm-hmm. explode yeah. that's such a cool moment yeah. but yeah the thor trailer is fucking they, but in, 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 it does the same but you are right it's it's it is the opposite extreme but man and jeremy turns to uh jr jr and goes man i, I sure hope uh you know this one doesn't suck like the first two thor movies and I, I was out of range people to hate, just i don't know why people thor hate the first two, two. Uh, thor one at the worst is is decent but man they had to build a fucking thor mythology like on yeah. a film, so they so it was t- mer- workmanship. Is yeah. the issue with Thor one? Mm-hmm. It had a lot of world building, and you know it suffers from a uh, uh, origin story yeah. syndrome. That all superheroes. It do. had yeah, it had it had a lot of world building. It had kind of a lame villain. I mean, besides Loki, but I mean, Destroyer was more so the the yeah, villain of sure. that yeah. film. Yeah, and but Thor, t- I think Thor two is a top one of the top three. Marvel. I, I, it's so good on so many levels, and, and so many people hate it. And I don't we, know why. Yeah, there is a unnormal amount of people who dislike Thor 2 and I can't fathom it. I just I watch that and it just every I'm just enjoying it. When the villain's chasing him yeah. through the portals yeah. trying to catch him like <laughs> I think I mean I will I think the villain could have been better but I mean that I as much as I love all the Marvel movies they are they don't make great villains 9 times out of 10. Whatever it is their villains are mediocre to average sure. with great heroes. And I think they, you know, so I mean, they're still they're still greatly enjoyable. But they, I just don't think they do great. In, in, but I'm a sucker. See, I, I mentioned this when I, I think it was here, maybe not. But we talked about Kubo and the Two Strings once upon a time, and I've mentioned that any villain with like the porcelain mask, yeah. you know, you give me a blank white mask with just like two eye holes yeah. and maybe just a little detail, I I'm in love. Yeah. That's like my favorite fucking thing. Like going all the way back to Ninja Gaiden Two, sure. when mm-hmm. like the villain in that game had that. Mm-hmm. And so I, I I saw the preview images of the Thor Two villains. I'm like, yeah. yup. Works for me. Yeah, like, you know, the dark elves. Yeah. yeah, the dark elves. They have that. Fa- I love that. That's my yeah. favorite aesthetic in villains. They, I mean, they look. I mean, they, and they do look cool. I'm gonna say, I, I like, I like villain di- monologue sessions. Sure. I, I love the the heroes down and the cocky, st- smart ass villain just you know spewing force and wisdom, or just brute force evil villain where they just are chopping through people. I like the extremes, but no, there's so many moments in Thor two that that scene and just I don't know Loki and him getting away is ridiculous and so the guy in the chat saying Thor felt like a filler movie because they're like oh shit we got to get another Infinity Gem out yeah. there let's make a Thor movie if you have no what it at worst it feels like they made an amazing movie yeah and then they it's changed a couple lines to to shoehorn the Infinity Gem in there yeah. but that doesn't make the rest of the movie bad they they don't actually shoehorn a. Uh... And and it's like, a yeah, gem we'll make there. this thing a gem. Okay, so the thing's a gem, and the movie, if it yeah. wasn't a gem, would still be a great movie. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't even need to know that the the mist is is like the yeah. gem of power. The all. only right. film that they've made that felt a little weaker because they forced the stuff in was the Avengers two. Yeah, that was the only movie that lost quality because they had a force in the Infinity stuff. I still mm. enjoyed it, but it definitely it suffered because of that. Yeah. But no, it's it, 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 it's funny. There's action scenes. I mean, yeah. Thor hanging Mjolnir on a coat rack yeah. will always be hilarious. Thor so polite and doing those little nice yeah. things. It's a, he's so subtly great. He is subtly great. Like people, I, I saw a thing online talking about how, like in the first movie, these people. He falls from the sky. These people hit him with a truck. They drug him. They hit him with their car again. And he just goes have breakfast with them. And he's just having a great time. <laughs> yeah. Yay, pancakes. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> he just loves life. It's just yeah. another so nice. day on Midgard. Sure. Cool. Yeah. Hit me with the car. Let's have some drinks and eat pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He's such a fun character. But he's so, they, they, they're like surprisingly subtle about it. Like, he... he 
It's like Drax in Guardians 2, where he's just like, he's fun. He enjoys the combat. And yeah. sometimes people don't like that as much. I Guardians don't know. 2. Are we going in? Yeah. yeah. Let me know when we're going into spoilers. Right now. All right. So I'm going to put it up on the on We're going to talk about here. Guardians 2 for the next 45 minutes. We're going to talk about it like as long as the movie is. We're going to go full plink it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is the worst movie since I murdered my wife. That, that's not from the Blinken reviews. <laughs> it's basically the Blinken but, reviews. <laughs> the biggest Second. negative I heard on Guardians of the Galaxy it was it was too much like the first, and they didn't they didn't do enough crazy new things. Was what, what some people have said. I, but I don't. I'll get my negative out of sure. the way first. And I don't think it's my negative. I think I thought it was a great film. I yeah. thought it was a great film, too. I don't really have a negative, but... I have a negative. Of the, well, I mean, you can't not have a negative. <laughs> That's true. I don't care what's happening to you. <laughs> you're going to find, like, let are you seriously? Come on. <laughs> let me get my negative out All of right. the way first, because your negative will probably be better. I, I, want to I know you're a big Red Letter Media fan. Have you watched their half in the back? Yep. Yep. My negative is the same as Jay's negative, which lends some credence to my negative. Yep. Uh, mine is... It, my negative is basically uh, uh, still fucking spoilers. It annoys me when I see when I see things. They laid on so heavily into Drax spoilers throughout the the previews that it didn't feel like anything that he was saying felt new to me oh, sure. or yeah. felt out of place. There was like a couple things in there which 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 You're were hideous. snuck in fairly well. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the good scenes. But a lot of the, the good trailers, scenes right? were, were already in the trailers and. Yeah, baby Groot with the bomb, you know all that stuff's in the trailers. Yeah, but uh, my 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 own, my negative is too funny, and t- specifically a thing that James Gunn does. And here's mm-hmm. here's a very specific example. You have this dramatic fight. You have the hero and the villain, and they're fighting, and it's tension and drama and emotional uh, weight to it. And then giant fucking Pac Man with Pac Man noises. <laughs> it's like it's hilarious. Yeah, I laughed. But it would be nice to actually have emotional weight stand for a little while. Well, I could see for some... And I think... I think like in, I said, that's a nitpick. I'm not no, saying I hated I the movie because in, of in this. In general, but. I, would, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. But that particular moment, I think it made sense. Because, A, he referenced it kind of earlier. Sure. And he did <laughs> say when he got those powers, he was going to make weird shit. Yeah. So that to me, that particular scene felt 100% natural and made sense to me. But I do think maybe the movie was a little bit too late when it didn't need to be. Yeah. But, I mean... Yeah, but you know, Rocket's having his diehard moment of like beating the shit out of fifty guys outside the ship, but then yeah. it turns into slapstick with them flying in the air. You know, once is cool, twice is funny, seventeen yeah. times in a row. It's like well, it's, right, it's, it's, it's still joke. funny, but it's kind of <laughs> yeah. the, but it's kind of the thing where once is funny, twice is funny, three or four times is kind of bad. But it goes to nine or yes. ten, that's kind of funny again. Yeah. So it kind of, it, but I do agree that there's that weird. This is more a warning when you go into it that this is a comedy, and yeah. it's the most mm-hmm. on the sleeve funny of any of the Marvel movies yeah. by far. I mm-hmm. think none of the other Marvel movies have been like we're going to have banana pie in the face comedy. I, I would say it's also probably the most emotional of the, of the Marvel films yeah, as well. Do both. <laughs> they did a great job bringing the side some side characters a lot of limelight and really kind of going crazy on what's his name with the with the whistle. I can't think of uh, Yandu. 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 Well, everyone. Yandu, Drax, Rocket. Well, like, especially well Yandu because I I even love like at the end what I thought was super touching like when his when his when his crewmate. Saw the funeral and saw that the other Avengers came like that. Like his yep. general happiness that that mm-hmm. happened was, I thought, like w- exceptionally touching for a Marvel movie. Like, yep. like they went to that level, and they were smart and didn't really. And they didn't actually didn't drop any comedy. They actually let that scene be serious, and they yep. didn't like go, like yeah. And th- that was good. They didn't they didn't ruin that one with yeah. a wacky moment, which was nice. Um, but yeah, and, and so when my coworkers talk about there's there's like. There's no plot to this movie. Like, if you had to summarize the actual plot of this film, it would take, like, three sentences. You know, it's it just Guardian, it, like, Pete meets his dad, his dad's evil, they beat his dad, the end. But the amount of character development that they get in here, that's why there's so much of that. Yeah. You know, you can have, it's two and a half, it's, it's a fairly long movie, and it didn't feel that way. Like, I nope. got out of the theater, I'm like, wow, that was two and a half hours? It felt like I, 90 minutes. I, I went into they the- used that time well. Yep. I went into the film at 9.45, I got out at, at noon, and I'm like, yeah. uh, wait, really? what? what? Yeah. <laughs> well, they did a great job. Of the the, the other the side villains mm-hmm. were after them because of things they did. Like, they created their own. It wasn't like they, it wasn't there was like some force trying to destroy the world. They stole from some people, and the people were mad at them and were hunting them down, yeah. which was a main focus of like two-thirds of the bad guys was self-created problems. Yep. Which mm-hmm. was, I, I kind of like that. It wasn't just, here's a new bad guy, other than, other than the dad. Well, he wasn't. I mean, he was. He was technically all part of the first movie as well. 
What? Ego was basically part of the first movie as well. I mean, his his plot line started in the first movie when they were trying to figure out his dad. Well, and, sure. And, I mean, yeah, the mystery. But like his but his, I mean, his plan, the things he's doing, correct. Didn't enter it. But him, yeah, yeah. The whole Quill's parentage and everything was part of it. Absolutely, because yeah. it affects how he holds the Affinity Stone and affects all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they haven't really mentioned it in the movies, but I know it's a thing in the comics. But I guess. Maybe it's just because it's slapsticky, so you're not supposed to think too hard. But is Drax just officially indestructible in the movies now? Uh, Drax is indestructible. I I know in the comics he is, yes. but in the movie they've never mentioned the fact that Drax literally can get hit by a bus and not take a scratch because he gets <laughs> he gets wrecked the fuck constantly in this movie, and he's just happy about it. He's also got sensitive nipples. <laughs> he does have sensitive nipples. Oh, my nipple! <laughs> but he can be dragged behind a crashing spaceship and hit 30 trees at Mach 50 million, you yeah. know, and he's just like, that was fun. I even think they handled the sisters really well, and that's mm-hmm. a plot line that a lot of movies would just flounder or just make cheap or ruin, and they really kept that together well. I was... It- and it didn't even need to exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't have to do it. Like, Neville could have just not been in the movie. Yeah. And Gamora could have just, you know, her... If you do that, Gamora's um, plot line is just that she's a hypothetical maybe love interest. Yeah. Correct. Right? Like she, so they kept Nebula in specifically so that she could have, you know, their own thing. Yeah. She's also the personality of Drax as well. Nebula is. Because all Drax, basically, Drax in the comic books, he gets his mind uh, destroyed by Moon Dragon, I believe it is. Um, and so he's got a brain of a simpleton, sure. but all he can think of is killing Thanos. Sure. So if somebody even mentions Thanos around his name, around him, he just, he starts flipping out and it like goes into like a Hulk rage to try to kill him. And that's kind of how they're building Nebula here is basically yeah. she has just, a, well, a legitimate reasons to try to kill her father yeah and he, even her story with her sister was really, t- really touching as far as like the every time she lost a battle would get part of her body yes. replaced with robotics i mean that was kind of like a vicious a vicious story they did yeah they did the characters well not a lot. And, and actually there's a villain which you got to talk a lot so they even kurt Russell, but they, they used kurt russell well i thought as far as like actually you know i didn't even see his his arc coming though basically i i was trying to figure out who was the full full-on villain in it oh sure it, yeah it, it didn't really even strike me yeah. until right basically when they revealed well, it well you know he's not going to be on the level but you didn't know he was going to go full on the main villain like, he, he figured there was going to be some level of mistrust and some kind of gimmick that was yeah. going to make him bad and but some not... level of being out of touch yeah. you know because he's millions of years old and so he yeah. doesn't understand stuff so you figured issues but not necessarily just active world destruction evil. katie was mad that uh quill lost his god powers in the movie she, she should have kept them like you can't just keep you give the main character god powers but you continue on the series they, they fully give that a MacGuffin too it's yeah. basically all part of the planet yeah exactly yep. but i mean i know i'm just saying it was just like it was it, it was amusing me like you, you, you can't just have the main character be a god going forward i mean you, but unless you're thor even he's more probably he with his abilities to speaking of gods well, he's not like you know I'm omnipotent, yeah, you know, summon matter. Like, Thor's just strong, yeah. you know, and has a hammer that lets him fly. Yeah. Like, that's it, you know. And so, power level, he's about equivalent with Iron Man in his suit, you yeah. know. And so, he's, he's not, like, Yahweh God level power. He's actually, he's he's uh, he's at about the same same level as, like, Superman for Thor. Nerds. He <laughs> he's, he's about the same, he's in the same power level as in what he can possibly do. Movies, he may be a little bit less. Yeah, because, I mean, movies, he doesn't, like, he doesn't shoot lasers out of his eyes, and, you know, like, he, he is not Superman level. Like, he could summon lightning. He doesn't do it very often. He, he did the owner tide? That's, well, yeah. it, he's he's the god of thunder. Sure, I know, but... but <laughs> thunder! Act- <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Sure, but, I mean, <laughs> I Iron, Iron, Man can, no. Iron, <laughs> Iron Man can summon lasers. I mean, so that's my point. Like, thunder lasers, super strong, can fly. He's, he's much weaker, I work weaker in the comic. I mean, Sorry. he's much weaker in the show than he, in the movies than he is in the comics. Yeah, well, nobody in, cares about the comics, old man. Because in the comics, basically, <laughs> Thor can go toe-to-toe with Hulk. Yeah. It's basically when Hulk gets angrier is when you know Hulk becomes more of a problem. In the comics, Iron Man had a naked fight with another guy, and they threw grass blades at each other, and that's how they beat each other because mm-hmm. they were hypersensitive. Mm-hmm. So you know, comics have weird things happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. but no. So the Guardians was all the scene where they're sending Groot to get Yondu's like. Uh, By the, way, yeah, the, the chat is shitting themselves. Yes, 
we all know that Thor can't fly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't split that hair. <laughs> He throws the hammer, and then he holds on to the hammer, Correct. and he just is along for the ride. Shut up. Anyway, Yandu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when, when they Yandu. send Groot to get when he when they send Groot to get the equipment that's locked when they're locked up, trying to you know pull it back, <laughs> and he keeps bringing back all the wrong. Oh, stuff. that's fucking hilarious. That is just a amazing. That scene could have lasted infinitely, and I would still be laughing at everything he brought yes. back wrong, like a whole desk, a little like guy's fo- or toe. Yeah. Just bring back. Please tell me you have a freezer full of toes. Nope. <laughs> and then we're never going to speak of this again. <laughs> Oh my god, that was... And then immediately after, like, 250 people are brutally murdered. <laughs> like, they didn't... He murders they... the shit out of everybody, that next scene. And then he blows up the building, mo- he blows up the ship mostly out of spice. Yep. <laughs> like, everyone who's dead, he could have kept the ship. He's like, nah, blow up the ship. Fuck them all. They didn't overuse Baby Groot. They went close to the line. Like, they used them a lot early, but then they were smart about not, you know... Did they... you... Oh, go ahead. And they did a good job about having him be baby Groot, not just Groot, but six inches tall. Yeah. Like, he behaved more like a child, which was interesting. You know, it's not just, here's Groot, he just happens to be small. Did you notice that he was always beating up on Drax? Yeah. He was always throwing punches at Drax yeah. whenever he, Drax was near him? Yep. Yep. <laughs> and then Teenager Groot was kind of amusing, too. Yeah. Uh, I did, you know, you do the math, and the, the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 takes place in 2014, so they left a gap in time to give Groot uh, time to age up, so they yeah. can go back to full, full-grown full Groot for the next film. Even Stallone and, like, the Ravager little subgroup was kind of interesting. Like yeah. they, like they, they introduced, like, a, a subset of, like, because they had, like, the five captains who were leading the funeral, and, like, at the end, they, they get Stallone and the four other weirdos, like, as the new criminal I'll group. I'll steal Andy's thunder because I read this on IMDb. Those are all members of the Guardians of the Galaxy from the comics. Mm-hmm. And, well, and one of them was and Miley, one of them was Miley, Miley Cyrus was the mainframe the head the robot head yeah <laughs> so who knows what nonsense is gonna happen with those guys yeah they could easily spin that off into its own show yeah, too sure um, when Which the trailer James, James Gunn said he wanted Nebula to have her own solo film hmm well I mean she's a good act the actress is really good mm-hmm. so it's you know oh, I wouldn't be okay with that I, I, I love the fact that James Gunn is gonna do all three of the Guardians movies too like he's you know he's staying the helm so he's yeah. kind of keeping the same theme in the field going and I'm I, as they mentioned too about uh, in in the red letter media review, um, happy that he's the only one working on it. One screenwriter. One screenwriter. Not Twelve yeah. people. Yeah. You know, because that's that's where that's where you get uh, that's how you get Batman v committee. Superman. Yes. This is well, I think, and yeah, and, and Marvel is kind of letting him do his thing. He's making them a fuck ton of money, and that and that world, for the most part, is one of the few things in the Marvel world just so far away from the Infinity Realm that yeah. they can just kind of do their own thing. Yeah. I mean, obviously, which is ironic, but they still they still give us more Thanos time than anybody else, even though even though it's a separate thing. They still, in a very clever way, gave us more of the Thanos world without having to like shove it down our throat. It was just right. naturally there. The odd part about Guardians, though, is what you're saying is is that they they are so far away from the Infinity thing, but they they're literally in the middle of it. Yeah, I know. Completely Absolutely. in the middle of, of the, the whole I mean, gauntlet. They had a stone. Adam Warlock's there now. He has oh. a stone, you know. People I'd thought s- Adam Warlock was in the first Guardians movie, but they're like, no, that wasn't him, but here he is for reals, yo. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm James Gunn did so say he, 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 he felt bad. He wished he wouldn't have put the, the Easter egg in the first one. Right. With the, the cocoon? Yeah. Yeah. That's I, why he I'm, made the second one a bit more fancy. I am so excited for Adam Warlock. He's... My belief that he's probably similar to how most people reacted when they saw Thanos in the first Avengers films, like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. Most and and like, oh, the fanboys are like... Yeah. And they're like, there's no fucking way they can go this drug. The fact they are this close to doing an Infinity War, Infinity Gauntlet thing is ridiculous. Like, when they put the Avengers together, like, no, it was like, that can't happen. You can't, you're either going to put them together and it's going to suck. They got this close, but you can't, you can't do it. And then it was great. And now they're literally expanded the world to this level, and now they're so close to actually doing it in an Infinity War and all this nonsense. It doesn't seem... And they're going to crash the Avengers and the... You're going to have, like, 20 heroes in a fucking movie. I mean, it's going to be insane. Growing up, <laughs> for having decades of just bad attempts at comic book movies, and now they're doing it and having Marvel to control, and them t- still taking a decent time, even though they're pushing it faster and faster, they're still doing more good than anything else. It's ridiculous. Man, as... as- Grow, again, you know, like you said, growing up with comic books and just not shitty versions. Like, I saw this, and like a couple months ago, I saw Logan. Like, these are things that I would not have thought were possible. Yeah. Oh, I and think DC Logan was last month. Yeah, 
In, in Whichever, thing, yeah. The point DC is, holy shit. Wait, it, I want Wonder Woman to be good. So bad. And I, Are I we just, done with spoilers? I, well, are we? Maybe. I don't know. I don't Maybe. know. We're, we're going to jump not. around a little bit. As this box I'll keep around. it up still. Yeah. We can be less overt with spoilers going forward, all possibly. Right. But, yeah. But be warned, if you're listening, we may fly into a spoiler randomly. Snake Sorry. kills Dumbledore. <laughs> uh, Solid Snake kills Dumbledore? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Snake. Snake! Uh, uh, Venom isn't actually Big Boss, and you can know that because he smokes and coughs mm. and Big Boss. Is a, anyway, uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 spoilers there. Yeah. Um, Which I heard is the worst part of 5. I, I'm anyway. torn... I'm torn on Wonder Woman because yeah. on one part, you know, the comic book slash feminist person in me is so happy to finally get a goddamn Wonder Woman yeah. movie. She's deserved it for 50 years. She's been one, th- you know, there's there's the triumvirate of DC heroes and we've had a million Batman movies, a mm-hmm. million Superman things and zero Wonder Woman except yeah. for the TV show. So on the one hand, I'm super happy and I want it to make a billion dollars. On the other hand, it's DC, DC has to stop. Like I, they have to stop, unless they have stopped. Like if she's, if this movie's different, if this movie's fun and colorful and isn't the drab, dark, depressing pack a razor blade with your movie ticket shit that they keep vomiting out, I'll be so happy. It'll be best of both worlds. Suicide Squad was closest. Ugh. You could tell that it was going to be happy. Yeah. And then the studio stepped in and said, "You know what? Let's make it depressing and drab instead." Even then, let's us let's let's us they, let's us wreck some core concept yeah. of characters. Like that movie was man, that it which make, which makes it almost more frustrating. Like Superman versus Batman was always never there, right? So I could watch a scene from that movie if I was to be channeling. Like, okay, that scene amuses me and not be offended. But Su- Suicide Squad has been on HBO a lot. I can watch a few scenes and it's like I'm like I can't handle it anymore. They just they just they hit missed the mark. Yeah. so critically. But as as long as they keep making money, they're not going to stop making terrible movies that mm-hmm. ruin the characters the movies are based yeah. on and so like i said one hand i want this movie to make a billion dollars on the other hand i want it to fail miserably because i want every dc movie to fail miserably so that they'll stop making these movies yeah but maybe they stopped making those movies maybe this movie will be best of both worlds and it'll be fun and adventurous and happy i'm afraid of this movie being good and not being a critical su- and not being a financial success sure. that's yeah, that's actually too probably going to be they actually make it good <laughs> and but it make it flops money wise so the people go well see we should have made it stupid and then people would have paid more money for yeah, it. yeah that would be the worst possible thing and then never get another girl in comic books again i i will say this though the Fucking the trailers for it have have made me want to see it um unlike you know batman v superman the second i saw them trying to do the dark knight returns parts of that i was like oh no. Who's doing Do you bleed? Which which person's doing Batgirl? I thought there was like, or, I thought that we were getting like a Batgirl from a, like someone just mentioned Whedon in the chat. I thought Whedon or someone, not it wasn't Whedon, but I thought it was someone or wasn't Whedon. I thought someone. You're saying Whedon wanted to do uh, Wonder Woman a long time ago, yeah. but I really thought one of those directors actually is doing like a Batgirl movie in there. It's possible. I could have swore it was thinking Whedon. of the Alicia Silverstone Batgirl from uh, <laughs> <laughs> from your favorite movie, Bat Credit Card. She was on some show the other day, and I'm like, oh, I forgot that she was hot. Yeah. <laughs> that was my Alicia. That's my. I was like, oh, she was pretty hot back then. Yeah, it was uh, Christina Applegate and Alicia Silverstone were the were the twosome for a while. Yeah, if you were a pubescent boy. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's. Yeah, and I, I was amused that in the trailer for Wonder Woman that was in front of Guardians of the Galaxy two that she has less dialogue in the trailer than like Chris Pine did. <laughs> and so I'm also worried it'll be the Chris Pine movie with his sidekick Wonder Woman. I'm thinking, uh. well, you know, I'm worried about that a little bit, but I, th- I think they made him seem, le- I don't know, I think that, I, I don't know, that there is definitely a risk there, but I think we'll see. But, but it, it, it was a funny yeah. scene, because the people talking were assuming he was the macho person in charge, and then she, you know, so it could be subverted in the film. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. It's, I think I think being guarded in having doubts about the movie being good is very valid based on their history of shit. I hope it's good, and I hope it's successful. Yeah. You know, it's just, I worry that neither of those is going to happen. Yeah. I'd be happy if it's good and successful. I'd be happy if it's bad and it failed. Although I wouldn't be happy because, I want, like I said, I want a successful Wonder Woman movie, but what? I want a bad DC movie to fail, but I don't want Wonder Woman to fail. I That's the... the- I was in a theater watching some movie in a trailer. This is back before Batman vs. Superman came out. And the trailer for that came out. And when they showed Wonder Woman, like, I don't know what else. There was a little girl next to me. She got, she was so genuinely excited when Wonder Woman was on the screen in that trailer. And I want her to get a movie that's actually worth that. 
The, yep. the theme but, music for that gives me chills. I love the, the her little Wonder Woman. Like, yeah, they do. I'm hopeful. Because I mean, my I know my daughter's. She dressed up as Squirrel Girl for like <laughs> a costume uh, contest at her Taekwondo club, and you know, she. Yeah. I mean, girls are comic book fans too. Like, yep. It's not, and that's. I did a rant on this once upon a time at at, at work a couple years ago for back to school. We got a big display of uh, uh, lunch boxes, and they were labeled girls' lunch boxes and boys' lunch boxes. And the the girls' lunch boxes have like Barbie and, and My Little Pony and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, even if you're gonna grant that boys don't like Barbie, that's fine. I'm not whatever. The the boys' lunch boxes had like the Avengers and shit. And it's like if you think that the Avenger movies are making a billion dollars each without women watching them, you're yeah. a fucking idiot. Well, I mean, you know, but these are the yeah. same people that took Black Widow out of the goddamn playset and put Captain America in for the playset of the well, the Jin motorcycle was out, chase. Not Jin, but uh, Ray was out of the first a lot of the first wave of toys yep. for Star Wars. Of course, they got a lot of shit for that. They I think did. They, they really they really have her everywhere now because she deserves it. But the fact that the Black Widow one was specifically yeah. a scene that Black Widow's in in the movie, and yeah. they made a the playset based cycle. on that scene, and then just replaced her with Captain America. Yeah. It's like they can't get it through their fucking head that you can have a vagina and enjoy comic books. Target-related-ish. T- I mentioned this yesterday. The boys, girls, toys. Well, yeah. They st- I'm not sure if they still do it, but a lot of the Target stores stopped having a boys and girls section, and they just had a children's section. And they had mom, the million, million moms motherfucker, whatever that group is called, like said, this is the worst thing in the world. You and I don't get why parents want have that need to agen- like gender identify ch- children in regards to toys they play with. I get the gender. Gen- I they want to. I get sure, but yeah. when it comes to a child wanting to play with a toy, why do we? Why do we have to force a certain type of toy on a certain person? Like why? I get that that happened when we were kids, but why do we need to push that forward? And when so if someone wants to change that, why is that? Something that generates so much hate and like just people are shitheads. It's, There's a great web comic I saw where they're talking about how like Lego frequently try like hobby is like model building and stuff like that tends to be a more male dominated hobby. Yeah. And as a side effect, that's true to some extent of Lego as well. Uh, you sure. know, it tends to be like model trains, you know, stuff like that. It's all more male. For some reason, we like the meticulous little shit. I don't know. But so Lego looks into trying to get more of the women's market. And then, you know, they do this and we'll do this and we'll do that and all this pink shit and all this thing. And the person says, look, here's what you do. Take any random Lego playset. Here's here's Space Dude with his spaceship and his laser blaster. Now you take a ponytail and you add it in there and say, just put the ponytail on if you want it to be a girl. And then you sell it on the fucking shelf. <laughs> like you change nothing but include a ponytail in every playset so you can make the main character a girl. <laughs> Done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's just it's just fast people get people I hate people. Yeah. They're not they're, those people are into the nine in my nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, frustrating. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's just the, the but yeah, I just don't fucking get the, the comics thing. Girls don't like comics. Yes they fucking do. <laughs> yeah. Yes they do. Go to Comic Con sometime. That's why I read Lady Death. That's just, that's the feminist in me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just want one fucking you know, executive. To, from these toy stores or whatever, just to go to opening night at yeah. any Marvel movie and just have a clicker and click boy girl boy girl you know man woman man woman and see mm. that the split is not ninety percent. Well, 10%. you know what? I think the company, like I think these companies are seeing it, and I think it's they the consumer. Care. No, I think it's the consumer. So like Target said, hey, let's let's do it. Let's have this gen- let's, let's just have a children, and it's the it's the it's the yuck fox. The consumers that freak out. I bet if more, I bet I, you know what? Com- companies like money. And I, I think they would love to do that. I think the people, if some company did more that more, you'd see these million moms boycott them, and they would lose more money because they tried, you know. Yeah. Because you got once we we've identified, you know, boys and girls have to be different. So God forbid we try to change any of that ever. You know, it's against it's against it's I, you know what it's probably somehow against God. I don't know how. Yeah. But I'm sure it's some sort of against God thing. I, I don't know. Probably. Pro- I mean, girls shouldn't like punching. Yeah, I don't know. That's, just, so, that's the assumption I'm going to go with. So Nick is uh, talking in chat there that says that uh, he thinks it's for shitty uncles like me who type toy for five-year-olds into Amazon. Five-year-old boys. Yeah, five-year-old that's boys in, Am- in <laughs> Amazon. So the one thing to know as an uncle or as a godparent or anybody who's who's there, all you have to do is get something that would annoy the fuck out of the parents for a five-year-old boy or yeah. a girl. Any, <laughs> just whatever, you know. I like, like uh, my uncle got me to annoy my mother, uh, dissect an alien. Sure, yeah. An old classic toy from yeah, yeah. the mad scientist uh, thing. 
And yeah, that, no, I don't. Cheated Fates Joe in the chat talks about he had a tea set as a child for coffee time. Famously, like five, six years ago, Easy Bake Oven, mm -hmm. they changed it from pink to just being oven colored. Like they just made it like white or silver. And I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Like, whoever. Like, we don't have to make pretending to bake. Uh, uh, a gender specific thing. If your little boy wants easy bake oven time, yeah. fuck it. Who am I'm I to judge? pretty confident the companies themselves. I really believe that the companies themselves would love that thing. I really think it's the revolt of the people that they are afraid of. Classic episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, Larry gets a, a small boy a sewing machine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he makes a nice pillow. If <laughs> I recall correctly, nice, uh, yeah. it's like a pillow throw or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it it's that a covers throw. your pillow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a it's slip cover. It's got this thing that goes this way and this way and this way and that. Yeah, it's it's got like a windmill looking thing. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like if you took like an uh, a backward seven and like four of those, you don't need you to describe it any further. <laughs> backward sevens. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a nice little Jewish I kid. love when he was dating a Palestine woman. and he, he <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things he does is when he wants to use the carpool lane to go to the, the baseball oh, yeah. game. He hires and her. so he hires a prostitute yeah. just to have a second person in the car so he can use the carpool lane. And then she's like, I don't want to wait in the car. So he has to buy a ticket and mm -hmm. watch the whole game with her. It's just such a... Yeah, I could see that. I could see him doing that. Like, it's such a real thing. Such a good show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that show, it's coming back really soon. It's, yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. The, the age thing, speaking of, like, you know, uh, the toy for five-year-olds or whatever. So we we're, were cleaning today, uh, you know, spring cleaning, whatever, and I wanted to turn on a movie for background noise, and I'm scrolling through Netflix, and I see Gremlins, the original mm -hmm. Gremlins. Yeah. And it's just so absurd to me, and, it's, and it was in the categories that it was under, which was movies for 11 to 12-year-olds. And I'm like, you know, like, as that kids... PG-13. Yeah, and it, like... As kids, we watch this movie, and people are eaten alive in this fucking movie. Like, people die. People are on fire. Like, this movie's brutal death. There's shooting and chainsaws, and it's a kid's movie, you know, for kids. <laughs> I will say this. There's a couple things about that movie. One, um, every time I hear the hi-ho theme, theme music yeah. uh, from Snow White. Yeah. Uh, every time I hear it. So there's been, like, a commercial going on recently that's yeah. that's got the hi-ho music. Yeah. I cannot hear that music without hearing the gremlins doing it at the same time. Yep. Uh, it's, it bothers me. Um, at Christmas over at the Shays, Did nobody you really. about how your dad died? No, no. <laughs> I got to see people's reactions to that. Oh, yeah. Because they've never seen gremlins. It was some of, the sh some of Jeremy and Katie's friends who came, and I, you know, I just forced them to watch gremlins I must, you know, have, I must have missed that moment I, you I, I, you uh, stepped out to get a soda i think i probably mentioned this before because it's one of my favorite little trivia things but that movie was almost brutal darker because originally there isn't a stripe it's just it that, is, yeah, that's it's, gizmo yeah, gizmo. Yeah. gizmo doesn't stay mogwai gizmo turns into stripe the lead gremlin and has and everything ends the same way brutal chainsaw gunshots melting alive eyes exploding just you know adorable gizmo <laughs> <laughs> It's like holy shit! Yeah, you sociopaths. Yeah, I got to though. got to experience yeah, yeah. somebody. Merry Christmas, kids! <laughs> I got to experience somebody hearing the favorite uh, Christmas scene from that about how she lost her father. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a such a horrible horrible story. It's not as bad as President's Day. <laughs> In Gremlins 2, they decide to have her tell an equally depressing story about why she hates President's Day. Oh, because, yeah. Like her uncle dressed up as Abraham Lincoln and was like buried alive or something. I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember Gremlins 2 as much. I, I still like Gremlins it. Gremlins but... 2 is weird because it was it really started out as just a hated sequel and now it's kind of charming. It, it, it's less, it's it's more straight comedy. Like yeah. people don't die as brutal. Like it, it's not as dark. It's not a horror film. It's just fun well when people saw it back then you really wanted gremlins to so, yeah. not but i mean it was not well liked but now i mean over the course of the year is more people like it now than they used to like it yeah it's by the alien three of the gremlin series yeah. and they still keep claiming they're working on a third one it is my favorite uh corporate uh, logo i've ever clamp. seen in my life <laughs> the clamp yeah just the world just being, yeah. Being yeah. no i mean that's <laughs> 
Yeah, that's better off 10 levels of awesomeness. <laughs> you, you got the bat gremlin. You got the smart gremlin. You got vegetable gremlin. I have heard people saying the movie's transphobic because of the uh, the transgendered gremlin. But, you know, nowadays people hate everything, but that's fine. Well, there's the guy that gets seduced by the trans gremlin. Yep, yep. <laughs> hey, it's hey, you know what? For an 80s movie, there's not a lot of rape in it, so that's pretty good. <laughs> well, a guy is raped by a gremlin. True, but I mean... <laughs> but it turns out he likes it. But it's more direct rape than it is like... Uh, She's not a hero. Correct. A villain correct. rapes somebody. Correct. It's not a hero raping someone like the other 80% of the 80s films. Yes. So it's or a uh, fucking, fucking Revenge of the Nerds. Jesus Christ. Well, that that, that one's that one's supposedly sweet or whatever it is. Um, the, what? Was it, no, no, no. Uh, was it High Plains Drifter? Well, yeah. Well, that's literally. I mean, that's but, the, but that's the main character who's who's supposedly the hero. But who well, just High rolls Street, into town. He's more of an anti-hero, so he's it's because to- he wrecks that town. He burns he, that place. Correct. Around. So I mean, that's just you. Th- you assume he's the hero, and he does terrible, terrible things. He kind of is the hero, but he does. He's horrible. the protagonist. Oh. Yes. Okay. But he's not a hero. <laughs> yeah, correct. But though the eighties films were all about happy guys doing terrible things. Yeah. yeah. Well, back then women didn't have any rights, so it really changed <laughs> in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. I like. I've always liked Gremlins too. Even as a kid, I liked it. Had Hulk, I, Hulk Hogan in the movie yelling at the projectionist of the movie you were yeah. watching. Good times. Yeah, I mean that. You know, that there was, was there was a there was a video version. There of is that a video as well. version. They filmed two different versions so yeah. that they would have it, it would make sense on video for for yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, they actually were pretty clever about playing that kind of nonsense out back in the day. Mm. Grab yeah. the monster. I'm going to have to watch it again. I don't even know where I can stream it. It's, it's not Netflix, I don't think, because after Gremlins, I, it just it was going to go to something else. Recommendations. Are we on recommendations? Are we on Zappity Grumbles? Did he have any Zappity Well, the first Zappity Grumble I already answered, it's nine. I don't know yeah. why he, he put a math equation in our chat, but it came out to nine. Excuse I just, me, I, I burped. Just, I just need to be home early, so that's why I was like pushing you know, yeah, well, was, you know, it's, yeah, it's been an hour. We're an hour. We're an hour, hour, hour. Uh, hour 20, you know? So while he's looking for Zappity Grumbles, I'll, I'll side mention. I, I, I half blind recommended because I was only like halfway through the first season, but Black Sails. Yeah. And I'm halfway through the third season, and the fourth and final season just ended. Uh, every season's been better than the previous one. It's, 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 it's very enjoyable. So, you know, I will I will follow up on my tentative recommendation and say that cool. Black Sails was good. Oh, um, Jesus. What? Fuck. We have There's, a few. Okay. Yeah, that's what we're a lot really worded, so I was trying to ignore I was kind of ignoring them. But <laughs> let's go crazy on them. Go crazy. Uh, he'd rod him. Yeah, that first one is Zappity Grumblet. It's hard. It's like I'm just. I, I'm gonna read it. Just, just read it out loud. It. I'm, I'm doing don't, it. I'm doing it. I'm, gonna, just I'm go. gonna try it. Start it. Go. <gasps> All right. Go. Power level battle engines. Are one with boost mechanics or TEP additional dice, leaving the others in the dust. Potential of a rat eight ten boosted to hit. Pow fifteen twenty one three to four dice for damage. Two shot storm strider, for example, is it a case that none of all should get boosts or none. Eh, man, <laughs> defi- I don't know. There definitely seem to be disparaging power level and battle engines. I agree with the concept of that statement. Exactly. I mean, the power to boost is always an incredibly good power. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, especially on the, the low rat machines, which yep. uh, or or well, like uh, uh, the meat thresher gets it in its melee attacks uh, mm-hmm. when it gets in there. I mean, it, it's as long. It, so some are more offensively powerful and some have more utility. That is what it is. Like, they're giving bulldoze to the Kador and Troll ones so that have the utility there and give them knockdown, you know. So the Storm Strider seems like it hits the hardest from range, but then a Meat Thresher wipes out armies. So it is yeah. what it is. But you have to throw infantry in front of him. I mean, the Meat Thresher is amazing against infantry, but someone's got to kind of throw infantry at a Meat Thresher. Or lights, because a medium True base lights, is, it's yeah. light or me- it's small or medium. So yeah, infantry, it tears apart. L- lights, it still knocks down yeah. and has Weapon Master smashing and then shoots it in the face with its... I honestly wish it knocked down everything, but I wish it knocked down largest, too. Yeah, Probably would I'm... be too good, but I think it Oh, no, it does knock down everything. It gets boosted to hit against smalls and mediums. Okay, that, that's... Yeah, it, exactly. it knocks down everything, and it gets additional die damage against everything that's knocked down. Okay, that's it's just the boosted to hit a small medium. Sure. But larges are usually low enough uh, defense that it doesn't matter. Does it have reposition? Something. Not anymore. It used to be a cavalry model in Mark yeah. II. It doesn't anymore. Um, I think we can still cast sprint on it because I think the Roadhog still has sprint as an okay. animus. Uh, but it used to be able to like it was speed eight. It would move up like three inches, hit stuff, and then move its remaining five, and then sprint another eight away. Like it was really fucking mobile. Gotcha. But eh, all right. So that's happy. Oh, God, 
it is fine for power levels to be different as long as they're re reasonably placed within their own faction. It has, al has always been my idea. Yeah. Correct. And that's, as long as there's a reason to take them, and some of right. them still don't, there's not a reason to take a few of them yet. Right. Yeah, like Siege Animatrix, it the one fit, I know for sure. It doesn't fit the role. They said they're here. there are three roles of battle engines, and they, here's the Siege Animatrix. It doesn't really fit in any of them. If it used its rage to boost its gun attacks, it would help a lot. Yes. That's, yeah. But the problem is, though, is fluff wise, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't make care. sense. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I like. I really like the change that they made for the Storm Strider to instead of aiming to power up, it uh, mm -hmm. it has to walk. Uh, yeah. Hence why I made made uh, the picture that blew up on like last Wednesday. Yep. Gravity. Gravity grumble. Um. Jesus, there's a lot of them. Oh, faster! What is your run. favorite Decepticon? I don't have one. Uh, uh, the what? Sound, sound wave. Sound wave. Oh, okay, uh, Star Scream. It's obviously sound wave. If you're gonna take sound wave, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's obviously sound wave. sound wave. I had a yeah. sound wave. I played with it as, in the bath yeah. as a kid, in his little, little. Yeah, that's, that's, the only, that's the only correct answer. I put my sound wave into the microwave to dry him off after yeah. I played with him in the snow. No, <laughs> poor sound wave. Zappy, <laughs> grumble. Uh, uh, how could PP create a game balance at different point size games? Do SR scenarios function? Well, it's smaller or larger point games and 75 points. Should PP develop modified scenarios for smaller point games? Do you have any thoughts for a bow variable war jacks, war beast points for casters, depending on what point size you are playing to help create this balance? Good question, Zappity. Grumble. Grumble. <laughs> <laughs> I would make a good episode to talk about it, but not, that is not a Zappity Grumble. That is not a Zappity Grumble question. I um, can see, for the quick thing, I can see that there are hypothetically issues because of the way that war jack points work when mm -hmm. you scale games. We but, all are aware of that, but discussing the details will take too fucking long. Basically, 50, 75 points is basically, the, yeah. in my opinion, the, the sweet spot of yeah. games that you want to play in that I think 100 points is too much because of the second caster. I'm going to tangent there. because I had this out yesterday, two days ago. In Mark 1, when you played a 750-point game, you would jump to 1,000 points to go to two casters. And, and two casters are always broken, but you didn't... The army got a little bit bigger, but it didn't feel crazy. In today's world, to go to two casters, you have to go to some insane point level... And then the armies are too big. I wish there was a two caster level that wasn't that much beyond the one caster. I wish, I wish like a it's easy, hundred points. Is yeah, I thought hundred. I thought hundred is one caster still. Is I think hundred is one caster. Still. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's well, still either one. way, we could do hundred point two caster, yeah. but it might not be official at that level. True. I just, I just, it was interesting because back in the day, you'd see a lot more two caster games being played in Mark One because it didn't seem that much more ridiculous to go to it. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. because of the way the points work, it's because even if you go to hundred points and you add a caster, it's still twenty eight plus twenty five. It's still fifty more. In some way so it's yeah. still it just it's still something you wouldn't want to do often but it's a shame you can't do it yeah and and in fact because of the way the battle group points work and because they were opt in mark three you almost could just say 75 points regardless of the number of casters yeah you know what i mean because each cast you add is going to bring 30 to 30 mm -hmm. points or so of yeah. their own shit so the 75 points will always be you know the infantry and yeah. whatnot because that that used to be the 75 points for the two headed beast yeah Back then. But because of the increase in battle group size, I mean, you don't even need to increase army. You can do two, three, four, five casters at 75 points, and they're each just going to bring another 30 points with them. Yeah. Well, definitely. Mm. Grumble. Uh, what well, is good resources for learning how to deploy your models? Uh, besides watching tons of battle reports with people using models I don't have, I play Protectorate. Play a bunch of games. Uh, uh, honestly, probably the, the vassals. Probably for just oh vassal, sure. Or just set it, or just set down your list and move it. I mean, just I've done that a lot of times. I literally downstairs will set up my army and just deploy it different ways, and I'll just do my turn one move, and then I'll pack it up or do yeah, it again. That's true. Just sit in, down by yourself and just move your army on turn one multiple times. Because a lot of mistakes you'll catch instantly. You know, oh, like yeah. you'll deploy the game, you'll move, and you go, oh well, shit, that model is behind that model. Yeah, that is. And you don't need to learn when, that in a game. When, when I played, when I, when back when we were good competitively, that's definitely something I did all the time when I had a new list was set it out and just move it. Just uh, do do stuff like this. Uh, basically, you can you can look at somebody's battle reports. You can see how they've deployed their line. Make some proxy bases for those. Put those across the table from you, and then lay down your army and pretend you're taking first turn to go against, against that it. army. Yeah. And then, I mean, basically, the more times you lay down your force onto the table and, and start moving it, uh, the more efficient you'll be. You can and will lose games on deployment if you don't burn or careful. Correct. Deputy. Grubba. Grubba. Uh, why do you guys for the lowest level of Twitch partnership so I can use my Twitch Prime free monthly sub to get you guys money? Um I didn't know about that. I, I will look into we it. can get money. I like money. How's our patron going? <laughs> our patrons, wah, wah. It's, set, it's set up. It's. Uh, I have nothing pointing to it. I had a video. Nathan and I were going to record for it. So 
give him an idea of what things we're doing. We could take your money, but we're too lazy to do it. The so. video we You're recorded welcome. was terrible. I felt terrible. It was, it was pretty. I didn't know what was happening. You're like, Nate, come stand here. And we talked, and I'm like, oh, give, what? And then I was awkward. So we'll make a new video. So, yeah, basically, I, I really want to get our Patreon going so we can get some better equipment here. So I don't have to use the same fucking laptop every single time we That thing record. is only 84 years old. It's it's getting up there. Yeah, I'm about to get rid of my, my I don't even use my iPad much. I'm going to get rid of it for a new one because it's so old. New laptop? Yeah, my laptop is like at least 10 to 12 years old. Anyways, it's, it's probably better than this one. <laughs> Zappity. Hello. Um, have any of you played Zaya? Legends of the Drifty Systems? No. Nope. System? Oh. Zappity. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> nope, Zappity. <laughs> no idea what that is. Um, There's uh, one in the chat real quick I'll throw in. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Battle Engine buffs being a corporate sales decision and not game balance related? Spoiler, everything they do is a corporate sales decision. <laughs> uh, we can just hope that it's also game balance. Yeah, correct. Exactly. It's always yeah. It's always going to be a combination of both. I mean, if it gets too obvious that it's corporate and then the game will start having bad, bad balance and people stop playing. And so they, ha- they have to have game balance, otherwise they don't have a game. So the corporateness has to be driven by some yeah. game balance it's- always. It's in their best interest to have models that you want to put on the table. Yeah. If I mean, game it's... balance was the most important thing for miniatures games, uh, Games Workshop would have been bankrupt 30 years ago. Correct. Like, you know, it's all business choices. Correct. I mean, they'll, like, I mean, I want the game to be balanced, you know, obviously, but let's not fool ourselves. Correct. Correct. They, they want some Storm Raptors to go out. They you want from top to bottom over there. There's like a mushroom over there. What? Uh, uh, it's like eight. Anyway, keep going. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll go to Chatley. Okay. All right. Uh, so goblins are coming to Blood Bowl. Uh, is there any point in playing other games now? Uh, there's so, a point to playing other teams in Blood Bowl. I so mean, goblins suck. Fuck you. The goblins in Blood Bowl, they do look really awesome. They're it's like still a Pogo and the Ball and Chain guy. Yeah. It's the standard goblin. They, team. they haven't shown any of the secret weapons of them, but the just the normal ones. They are really tiny and they are like heavily armored. They definitely don't look like they should be armor seven. But, yeah, they, they look awesome. They're kind of like the guys in... Uh, um, bad ankles. What? They have bad ankles. That's why they have low armor. But I was thinking like the, the goblins in uh, Labyrinth. You know how they're just like little oh, suits with, of armor with, with a nose with, sticking with just out, sho- just shoveling her out. Just a helmet, yeah. yeah. Uh, helmet and some feet. Those are the, those are the snotlings. Those are like my favorite, yeah. though, the snotlings with those. Um, also, on the subject of Blood Bowl, I want to say congratulations to Tom Anders. Um, his salon team that he created for the Living Rulebook 6 um, is actually being made into an official team by Cyanide. Oh, cool. So it's going to be on Blood Bowl, the, the Blood Bowl, the video game. The PC game? Cool. Yep. Blood Bowl 2. Yep. And Someone from Madison went to... There was an, you talk about events and people doing a thing. Someone, they had... Final Fantasy Flight had their Star, had their Star Wars championship, and someone yeah. from Madison... Made like the top sixteen, or possibly even higher, for like the Star Wars Destiny game. There, like they. Oh wow! Kicked, but I, I don't know if he made it to top eight or top four. But I know he made like out of like five or six hundred people, he made it to like the top brackets. Good job, Madison. Yeah. Random. Okay. Um. So Zappity Grubble. Um. What's wrong with Australians? They live in Australia. <clears throat> we should have an. We should. That should be episode title. Episode topic. We just start off. What's wrong with Australians? And then do we just talk for an hour on that? Because there's a lot. All we're just going to be talking about is is what's wrong with the in, the world. Well, I in, mean, in Australia, just basically. Yeah. Well, there's that a would show be a called Strange Calls that's on Hulu now, or maybe it's Netflix, but it's Australia and it's weird. Yeah. Is it undead weird? Because Undead is a fucking weird yeah, Australian it's, film. It's it's that like, the first episode. It's this guy that gets transferred to this town, and everything's weird there. It's like eerie Indiana level weird. Okay, like his first case is uh oh, and, and he's uh he's stuck with this crazy old guy who loves Hero Quest and insists that the, he's the wizard and the new guy's the dwarf and nobody likes the dwarf. Um, but um, the first case is a guy that eats too much fried chicken, so he's turning into a chicken. <laughs> okay, it's a weird show. Zabity. Grumble. All right. Uh, what's the difference between ponytail and pigtails? Uh, ponytail uh, is one in the back and pigtails is two on the sides. Yep. One says, don't fuck with me. The other says, hold these while you fuck me. Well, I think, you know, in a, you both can be used, be used for, as, for animals. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, whatever. Yes. <laughs> Zappity. Grumble. Uh, is it me as a war machine a little too rules bloated? I think the the time has come for a more compact rule set. Let's say down to four pages. Throw in a few silly rules too. 
No. Four. By the way, that's an Age of Sigmar joke. They're, 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 they're yeah. making an Age of Sigmar joke. What's yeah. Age of Sigmar? Ah, hilarious. Wow. Zappity. It's, it's not actually, I don't think it's that bad for rules. It isn't. It, it, it has to be to be as tight as it is. And the core rules of the game are actually very small. Yeah. Like, if you look in Prime and whatnot, like, the actual rules of the game aren't that big. I do <laughs> think a Privateer Press is trying so hard to make every model legal forever that they are. I mean, there is a model blow because of that, unfortunately, after, like, you know, 15, 20 years, now suddenly you're actually human. When everything stays valid forever, it does become a challenge. But that's just life. It's the world we live in. Zappity. Zappity. Grumble. Um, what do you guys feel about the new Warhammer 40K revamp rules so far? I have no nothing about it. No nothing about it. Um, I room with oh, somebody. Oh, they're, they're Sigmaring uh, 40K. Style, uh, kind of ish, yeah. yeah. but but it it sounds like they're Sigmaring it like as Age of Sigmar a year and a half later, like yeah. when the they learned their Age of Sigmar, not when the, they learned their lessons. If during your hero phase you <laughs> pretend to ride a gene stealer, you get bonus. <laughs> well, dice. the interesting thing about if so. I have heard people who play Age, Age of Sigmar like the game now a lot. Mm -hmm. The difference for me is it's not, no matter what they do, they turn it into a skirmish game, not rank and file. So even if it has the greatest rules in the world, I want to play Warhammer Fantasy for, skir for, for rank and file, so it'll never appease to me. But if they do a, but since 40K is already skirmish, yeah. and they make 40K have interesting rules, and it's already skirmish to skirmish, probably would be okay in the end of the day. Yeah. But, yeah. you know. I haven't, I haven't. I mean, I, I room with somebody who's a, an extreme 40k fan, yeah. and I have not heard him say like, oh, "I'm done with this game." Tyranids are the best. Necrons are stupid and lame. I like Necrons. No, nope, stupid and lame. Tyranids are the best. Necrons are chumps. Zappity. Zappity grumble. <laughs> uh, does Jeremy ever play ranked mode in Hearthstone? Because warrior and rouge decks. He only plays that deck get eaten up by all. Eaten you, up in there all the time. You only play ranked in in that because you don't want to play a. If you hire, you, if you rank, you can get better prizes when the, when the seat when the month is over. Plus, yeah, when you there's play, there's no reason not to play rank. Yeah, when you play, and you technically play people who are who are your level of wins. Yeah, and wild anything goes. So you get people who just well, you can play standard unranked. They're not talking wild versus standard. They're oh, talking ranked versus. You can play unranked, but there's no point to. Yeah, it. you'd want to play ranked because yeah. you lose nothing from playing in ranked. The Correct. worst case scenario is you get up to twenty, which gets you a free card back yeah. at the end of the thing, and then you can't lose below that. And you can, yeah, he definitely plays ranked. Ranks, yeah, even when I do. Everyone plays ranked. There's literally no reason not to play ranked. Other than to complete quests. No, well, ranked, even, even then you, you still, can't, you can't it do be, it. It would be, hard, it would be harder to do it in wild or standard because you... Why, like when you, not um, even wild, when you go into standard mode, you can either play ranked or casual. Yeah. And there's no reason not to play ranked. Casual has zero advantage over ranked. Okay. Okay. You just click ranked, and all it does is after each game, it tells you if your rank went up or down. And it's other than that, it's it exactly. But when you play ranked, and you're if you're level nineteen, you play the nineteens. You don't play like a grandmaster level one. If you go into like standard unranked, the best player in the world might be you know bored and chest and listen is crushing people in standard. So you you have a better chance at fair games in ranked. You will still come across broken decks, but, but who cares? Your I mean, odds of a better game. It was, is... It's not like arena where you have mm. to spend gold for the privilege. Yeah, it's just a yeah, toggle it's... you click, and you start at rank I think twenty five. Yeah. Yep. and as mm -hmm. long as you get to at least 20 you get free shit at the end of the the month and it's literally impossible to lose below that like you play yeah what's five to or, lose yeah. there is no disadvantage Correct. unless unless you just get angry like if you get up to like rank nine or ten and then losing the game you see your rank drop down and that would just enrage you sure i guess if you're that petty and small but why are you even like, playing then yeah yeah and i yeah i, I could argue yes Zappy. Grumble, uh, why isn't Katie on anymore? She is, doesn't want to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's busy. She's been busy. It's tax she's season. Been, she's yeah. an accountant. I mean, we just got through tax season. She's tax also season. lazy. Yeah, yeah she, and she's lazy. If she has, if Basically, if Katie has a choice of staying at home, just watching TV, cuddling with the dogs at night, or doing anything else in the world, yeah. I think... Plus, is that restraining order one. that you have against her? I don't have a restraining order. Oh, we can't talk about it? Yeah, we can't oh, talk I'm about it. I'm sorry. There isn't, there isn't a restraining order. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rumble. All right, that's it. That's it for those. So chat, I don't know if there's any for There's any a few Twitters. in chat, so you can look up Twitter while I go over chat. Um, so, uh, Zap Grumby. 
Brian, what's your favorite Cthulhu Wars faction, and are you excited about the new stuff coming out? The new stuff has actually been stuck in customs for three weeks, and the company is it's under intense inspection, and they refuse to tell the people what that means, and they're like, get our shit out of customs so we can get it to the customers. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited for it. It's like... It's like it's like ninety percent of, of of the Kickstarter stuff is going to be delivered. Speaking of Kickstarter stuff, I got my uh, 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 scenario book for Conan today. Nice. I should be getting my stuff soon. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I don't have a favorite faction of the of the current it's been ones. Too I, long since we played. I have because I, I, I stopped playing it because I knew the expansions were coming, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to play the fuck out of this when the expansion comes. So I'm just going to let it sit on the side and just like play the fuck out of it in like in a year or so. You played the goat. I remember one time yeah. when we played. There, I mean, there. I like all, all of them are pretty cool. Cthulhu coming up whenever he wants so with his power is pretty awesome. Yeah. Just rising from the sea and just unleashing hell is pretty yeah. awesome. It's a fun game, and I'm very excited for the stuff. I um, like the game a lot too. It's, yeah, it will be. Is I will bring Cthulhu's Wars out. Part of the reason I sold a bunch of my collection of games was to make room for Cthulhu Wars. I needed shelves of space for that game. Oh, I forgot to mention an announcement. Speaking of board games, we're going to be doing a special uh, broadcast from here on a certain board game. Cool, neat. Uh, Zappity, if you could on be the Saturday. villain of any game, what would it be and why? And that's, you can either be the villain that currently is the character, or you can replace them in that game. Whichever you'd prefer. A game? As in, like, a movie? Or wait. Any game. Games are not movies. Movies and games are two different things. That's why they use the word game instead of movie. That's a very So, for example, question. you could either be Sephiroth, or you could replace Sephiroth as the villain of Final Fantasy VII. Or you could be, be Dr. Wily. You could be Dr. Wily. Or you could just be Andy... Fighting against Mega Man. Mm, I could no. be Kefka. You could be Kefka. Uh, it, the second he destroys the world in that game is such a glorious moment. Yeah, you're like, man, this game's kind of short, but I'm fighting the villain. And then yeah. you lose. And you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jim hates that game just for that reason alone. I don't uh, know why he hates that. That's not Kefka. why I hate that game. Why do you hate it? What? I hate that game because at the end of the game, all your characters are identical, and I don't like the Final Fantasies that the way the skill system works, you end up with a dozen identical characters. I, play, I like I was, the ones where they're different all the way to the end. I was too young when I played that game for that to have been like a, a thing in my mind that's set. So I, I don't have like that. That may that's that sounds like a very valid complaint, but I just don't have the memory of the of that level of it. And that, yeah, and that's fair. And and it's just the way that like maybe that means the game was good enough that I played it to that point yeah. where I had twelve people, all of which would just quad cast Ultima because they all had the same skills and they all you know. But whatever, Kafka's a good one. I but like I mean, Shodan, but that's well, just who's my favorite villain, not who would I want to be. Yeah, Shogun. Shodan. Oh, I thought Shogun. From the System Shock. Last games. Warrior Shogun. Yeah. That guy's amazing. Uh, well, I mean, Friday the Thirteenth is coming out, so I mean, I can just say Jason. And there you go. I mean, that's God. I, play I just I, so much. So much. I guess I just don't really identify with villains as much. Oh, what more. else is there? The, 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 yeah. I what? Would, I would much Should rather some like dumb hero. So, like some of my favorite games got to the stupidest villains. Like who? Well, well, okay, the one I'm playing right now. Yeah, Blaster Master. You can Blaster be a giant Master floating fa- brain. Wouldn't you want to be a no, giant it's a, floating no, brain? No, you beat Mother Brain immediately. That's your first boss. No, but it's is Mother Brain. You fight a fucking mutated frog. That's awesome. But I don't want to be a mutated frog. Mother Brain from from Metroid. No, no. Not. I always like Kraid. Yeah. Kraid has the best uh, world music. Everybody likes Ridley. I'm a hipster. Kraid's good. Some fighting games have some pretty good amusing villains. Yeah, it yeah, probably say, would be the and way. And Bison to go. is cool. Uh, I'd like to be Raul Julia as M. Bison. Dracula and Symphony of the Night. What is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. <laughs> Le Chuck, Le Chuck, Le Chuck, that's a good one. You can, be a, you can be a demon zombie ghost pirate by the time of the fourth Monkey Island game. God, no, I, I still demon identify... Demon zombie ghost pirate. I still identify with heroes more than that. I'd be like, I would, would love to... Be, I would... <laughs> <laughs> I like... I, Rad Spencer. That's, that's sure. who I'd like to be. He's named after me, though. Hmm. All right, so, yeah. Zappity. Is there any others in there? Y- yeah, something about if Convergence get an infantry theme, does Aurora get more relevant because the terrain guidelines have giant obstructions in the middle of the board? Uh, well, they have line of sight blocking in the middle of the board. We've been mm-hmm. doing a lot of, like, forests and stuff, not just buildings. Uh, but uh, does flight still ignore terrain? I thought it just ignored models for flying over. Like, you can move over the terrain, but to charge, you still have to be able to see your You still have target. to be able to see it, yeah. So, I mean, it's nice that she grants flight, but flight's the equivalent of Pathfinder as far as overcome. Well, I guess you can't Pathfinder through a building. So, yeah, it makes her more relevant. I'd say she's still the worst Convergence caster. But, but you could you could fly over a building with flight. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. it, it, the only thing that flight has over Pathfinder is going through buildings and going through models. Correct, correct. Yeah, 
I mean, yeah, if you're a larger base, but the issue is some of those are smaller bases. Yeah. Is she, oh, you know, her entire battle group has flight? No, she uh, has a spell that grants flight to everything in her control area. Oh, so they... It's, it's like, pl it's plus two movement and flight. It's like the Crusader's Call style thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Sweet. a good spell. It's yeah. a good spell. There you go. Arctic Circle asked, is Jason the villain of a Friday the 13th game? There's a Friday the 13th game coming out this month where you it's an eight versus one. Right. One person is Jason, and the other eight are counselors trying to survive. So the point is, isn't that a game with one hero and eight villains? I think ways. that's his point. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that's the point. Yeah, like no, the set upon you Jason. Do you know what I would love to do? I would love to play the first stage of that game where you're the, the eight counselors, yeah. and you just watch Jason drown in the... <laughs> No, you just fuck each other. Yeah. yeah you the, just, the, the first just... stage is just having sex while a kid drowns. <laughs> it, would suck, it would suck for the for the Jason players. You're like, you have to tap A to stay, <laughs> stay swimming, stay above your the surface. Free, your frantic gesture talking about sucking when we're discussing having a sex party was a little <laughs> context uh, insensitive. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Zappity. Well, the whole thing about... Uh, Katie's dick not working anymore which was pretty amazing <laughs> my dick don't work wait work. what Katie's dick doesn't work anymore yeah I, I, but Katie Shea her dick don't work her dick don't work <laughs> you must have you must have just missed I must I must have missed just that missed that yesterday was that yesterday then yeah it was yeah. yesterday afternoon oh or no it was late it was late afternoon yeah. so I, I must have been just already gone yeah it was just uh, I don't yeah whatever oh because that funny. was a question is, it, 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 cause cause was they get getting, annoyed at people asking them over and over and over again when they're going to have kids and oh. so they said that she should just say, my dick don't work. <laughs> Katie should claim that she's impotent and cannot get an erection to impregnate and, and just confuse people to where they drop the topic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Nathan, others can answer as well. I wanted a t-shirt that Katie wears. My dick don't work. <laughs> and Jeremy well, I also enjoyed like when Megan said, fuck you, marry yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so others can answer this as well. You love tartar sauce. The 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 tartar sauce, the, the solo, no, not the solo. No, I love the tartar sauce. Actual, tartar the sauce actual. is great because it's mayonnaise plus pickle relish, and I love mayonnaise and pickles. Yep, you get to choose one to eat it on. Okay, a well done steak, uh. mac and cheese with ketchup, uh. or Limburger. Uh, of the three, I would be most able to consume the steak. <laughs> Probably the steak as well. That was from Dan for you. Oh, of course it was. Thank you, Dan. Skittles, Dan? Skittles, Dan. Because oh, he was there for the Limburger, so he was the Yeah, oh, that fucking Limburger. Wait, Jesus. what? I don't, I don't... You want some Limburger? No. <laughs> I, I still I already, have I already 99% know. of... No, you don't know. I, That's the point. I we know. are grown adults. I even tried Limburger. Brian even tried it. No. You have spent your whole life assuming Limburger cheese is terrible. You've never it tastes, actually... It tastes it. good. It smells like shit. Have you tasted it? Yes. Oh, you have. And you I actually have enjoyed had, it? I've had Limburger. Oh, do you want some Limburger then? No. Because my stance was it tastes like shit and also smells like shit. Uh -huh. And I bought it like three months ago, so it's uh -huh. extra stinky by now. What, it, what was interesting is the package had... It had the, 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 instead of having an expiration date, it had like five dates. And it, at each of those dates, it basically like leveled up like Pokemon style. Like this is where it gets really stinky. This is where only the insane eat it. And this is where you should throw it away. <laughs> oh, it was not good. I fed some to my dog and then she puked. <laughs> Shit, it's a true story. Yeah. Are we recommend are we recommendation time then? On the recommendations, as far as I can tell. Uh, if I missed already, it, too bad. We already Thank talked you. about Guardians of the Galaxy 2, so I won't recommend that, but one of you can. Instead, I'm going to recommend American Gods. It's on Stars. Uh, episode 2 aired yet, maybe? Today, today. Sure. today. episode 2. Uh, so, you know, yesterday by the time this goes up, probably. But uh, American Gods, the book is great. The TV show is so far also being great. Uh, they're doing intelligent, different things. I was very amused by... Uh, so two things I noted. One character's name is a pun, but if you say it out loud, it ruins the pun. And so they just have never called that character by their name in the show, which is an interesting choice to make. And also, have either of you watched it or mm -hmm. read the book? I've read the book and I've not. Well, I, I'm gonna. So, I, well, well, this. So in the book, I and mean, this is very minor. This isn't like yeah. a spoilery thing. So in the book, there's there's uh, a young. One of the characters is like. Uh, Young, he recognizes, he rec he, not recognize, he represents like 80s corporate excess. So he has a limo and he smokes a stogie and he does coke and he, he's, he is 80s excess because it, that's the new religion. Like mm -hmm. when the game, when the, when the fucking name, when the book came out, like that was the new god was excess. And the, that, uh, in this one, that character is very 
techy virtual reality glasses, you know, like you know all that stuff. So it's like they they made the change to keep him current for which for makes our, sense based which makes on sense. The, it was a very movie. smart change yeah. to make because yeah. that character has to be contemporary. It has to recommend represent the current Zeitgeist, and Correct. so that was a cool change. But Ian McShane is fucking amazing in it. I will. I don't own. I don't have stars, and I fully. In, I, I I do. Ash versus the evil. You should. You need to. You have. Yeah, that I have started. Raylene got the free trial, so we could watch American Gods. So yeah. I'm finishing season three of um, Black uh, Sails. Dark Sails because it's on Hulu. Sure. Black Sails. So then I can watch season four on Stars yeah. before our free trial ends. And I need to marathon Ash versus Evil Dead, and we're watching American Gods. So I get Stars a couple times a year. I I'm, I might either wait a month or two to get it to watch all of American Gods and binge it, or I might just get it next month after a couple of episodes are out because I, I want to watch it. I read the book. Like, well, before I read the, my problem was before I read the book, I heard everyone saying this is the greatest thing in the world, and I'm not a huge Neil Gaiman fan. I think he, I think he's decent, and the book I thought I found the book very compelling and interesting, but it yeah. didn't. It wasn't like this life changing event it is to me that some people. But I mean, it was I had too much sure hype. It, it was gimmed to you, yeah, in many, yeah, in many ways. But I, I do want to see, and the, and the show does look phenomenal. Ian McShane, Ian McShane is, is fucking amazing. Yeah, so. It's something I will get, and plus, if I get it, then I, will, I probably will go through the Black Sail things. I probably, I probably rewatch Ash vs. Evil Dead again because that show is phenomenal. If you're gonna get stars like a month from now, you should marathon the first three seasons of Black Sails yeah. on Hulu. You might as well. Like I said, it's it's basically Game of Thrones with pirates. Yeah, and uh, the first season was good. Like it went like B to A minus to A, and I'm sure season four is A plus. But so whatever. I mean, it's pirates. It's got to be good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's if pirates are doing piratey things, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. They're key hauling people. Uh, they don't. They. What's funny is somebody does recommend burying treasure at one point, yeah. and everybody else tells me he's a fucking idiot, and that's the dumbest thing you would possibly do. They're like, "We get all this gold, and you think we should just put in a hole in the ground? You're an idiot." <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like meta humor. That's the best kind of humor on shows. What's Bam. your recommendation, Andy? My recommendation is Blaster Master Zero. Sure. That uh, you can get for the Switch when they add in whatever the the um, shop is for that uh, but you can get it on your nintendo ds it is every bit it every worth it the ten dollars and 54 cents that i played on it so far it is uh basically Wait, so far do you keep paying for it no there's a dlc but i think it's free oh okay anyway. i thought maybe it was like some yeah yeah but it's it's the pretty much just a a touched up version of the 8-bit nes version so it's got better graphics so it would be like a super nintendo version sure. of it um but it still looks like 8-bit yeah <laughs> um overall it's been been really good it seems a little bit easier but uh it's blaster master because you've played blast master a million times uh no i i still am pretty horrible at it fair you can't mm -hmm. cheat in this one either you can't throw a grenade can't and pause it trick? Aww. yeah that was some, yeah, that's <laughs> definitely something I did. Yeah, but it's well, do that same thing against the yellow bastard in the first Mega Man game. You had to like get magazines to learn cheat codes back in the day yeah. too. You could just go to the internet, you like spend money or go to the store and read magazines, to understand these little gimmicks to get yep. past stuff. So hard. I remember getting one time the stupid, uh, I think it was Game Pro or something like that, put a cheat code in there, but it was it was their April edition, so it was a april a fool's edition so you they had some kind of stupid cheat code where you can get simon belmont into your teenage ninja turtles the arcade game and they were lying to and you. so i tried forever trying to get that code to work in the start menu screen and it did not work it was just somebody who had a very nice and clever cut and paste job of the graphics nice and it's just weird. and like the codes even without the magazines like somehow they would just enter into someone in the grade school would hear the code in the whispers of the wind and spread it around and we'd all know you know Justin Bailey and all underscores mm -hmm. gave you the wave beam from the start in Metroid and I never read that in a Nintendo Power yeah, just, but we all just heard it somewhere I think it I think just a this, lot of them it's were, the Channel Ten News yeah news, news tonight children here's your cheat code for the, you actually would call it they had numbers we'd call for a help yeah. assistance you'd call one you know eight hundred cheats and you're like can you help on this i game? did call the nintendo hotline a couple times yeah i <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. i had to call it i never called the nintendo hotline i call it once i forget what game it was for but i needed it. shadow run for the super nintendo i called it for i could not get the damn mermaids to go away from bremerton turned out you had to order ice from a guy in a bar and have them delivered on the docks because mermaids don't like cold water boom <laughs> <laughs> there you go just saying well yeah get uh get blast master zero it's uh, just playing the first stage is the music is just uh, like a slightly upbeat. 
uh, version of the the original theme music. Um, it's all done by Sunsoft as well. It's oh, also I'm super excited. Darksiders three got announced last week. Yep. Yeah, I, I I saw that. Oh, I'm like, oh, Andy will be happy. That's pretty exciting. Oh my god! So have you finished two yet? Nope. Have you started two? Nope. All right. I'm 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 playing through the first one again. Last uh, I saw you were playing that spider boss that you fought the last time I looked with you. Much I more open world and bigger. Two's That's much what I've game. heard. I did hear though that you can see where the money ran out in two because they have these big open worlds, big open worlds, and like the last couple dungeons are like start, straight line, end. Like the <laughs> the maps are pathetic because they they just the plug got pulled like right towards the end. That's happened at the Little Public too until the fans had to like rewrite the ending practically. They just yeah. ran out of time. But uh, yeah, THQ Nordic uh, got all the rights to the Darksider series. They remade uh, one and two and like a new graphic version of them. They're out right now, and they just announced Darksiders three, which is going to have Fury in it, I believe. Which is pretty cool. Is just got a whip. Yeah. Well, it's famine and pestilence. Mm, no, they're, these are different. Uh, different quest. Different ones. Different. Have you have you seen the trailer for it? Nah. You should watch the trailer for it. Nah. It's pretty awesome. But anyway, yeah. Blast Master Zero. There you go. I'm going to recommend people should go back and play as Heroes of the Storm. We talked about it last week a little bit. I don't know if you ever recommend it. But Heroes of the Storm 2 is pretty great. It's the same as 1, but they added like Overwatch loot chests and other sorts of fun things. It's just, uh, the gameplay is the same. The gameplay is the same. There's, I mean, if you, like, JR is going to start playing. Like, he, he Last time he played, there was like 20, he was, tw- he was 26 heroes behind from the last time he logged in. And there's just so much more to that game. Yeah. It's just a fun MOBA, and I don't know. I've been our group has been enjoying it a lot more lately, playing it again. So it's just kind of a fun thing. If you if, if you used to play it and liked it, I think you just give it a chance and see all the new heroes and play. And I don't know. It's got all that synergy between them and all their games because like uh, everything you know, if you play with friends, you unlock this in this game or this in that game. You know, it's standard Blizzard shenaniganry. Kaya but, broke my speakers. No, so I can play with a headset on. I guess. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you were complaining about not playing it, and I was. The, the next day, we were like, where's Nathan? Because <laughs> we were hoping that you would log in. Because Chris and I were ready to play with you. What day was that? I think it was after the podcast last week. Oh, yeah. My bad. Well, the big problem is, like, for me, it's like, I want to play, like, like, Mondays I play board games. Tuesdays I play board games. Every other Friday I play board games. Wednesday I go to the game store for a chunk of the night. So, again, Thursdays I'm supposed to go play board games, but usually it's just vegging the fuck out. So, it's like trying you to... You are the most social person who hates people. Yeah, it's you so... do stuff every single day with people, and you hate them. Yes. Well, there's except for those nine, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's not really hate; it's just, it's just complete indifference to their existence. There is a hate list. It's also very sharp, but those people are going to die. Uh, <laughs> it's about nine people, and I know where they live, but that's a different topic. I can't talk about it until law reasons. <laughs> My lawyer said to not talk about it in public anymore, so I'm just doing what he said. Good times. All right, I'm going to go home. Speaking of things to do. I yep. Guess. Oh, Brian, I left my power adapter at your place. Wow, that sucks for you. It, it's I, cleaned suck. the, I cleaned the basement up, and I did not see any kind of cable down there. We or, it, it was underneath your your uh, shadows table. Shadow table. Your big yeah. table. There's, there's there's the big table, and then there's like the little table there that has like a bunch of your oh, your plug, bottles. It's, on. Like, it's like plugged into the wall. You mean it's plugged oh, into the wall underneath it's, it. Then it's still there. Yeah. Because I, uh, I did I did rearrange and clean last night. And get, I got Gloomhaven because we're playing Gloomhaven tomorrow, so I kind of set that. I always set up Gloomhaven the day before. Which I so should do. You we, could bring that on Tuesday, or are you off theory, until Wednesday? I work Tuesday. This is the most fascinating topic for our listeners. Listeners, right there's a power cable. Oh my god, my phone dropped the floor. Ah! <laughs> All right. Look, it's, that was my it's butt. Stay puffed, Domo. Bar. I want him in a claw machine game. Bar.